it's Danny Daniels and her husband this time, yeah. world famous star at this point, award winning. I'm the biggest star of the industry. I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm <laughs> exactly. Not, anytime you date a guy, you're like, please don't have a terrible car. Working with Danny, I was like, dude, you have a huge dick. He's like a Subway sandwich. If it's a big dick, I like to warm up before. I like to get my pussy wet. Stretching before the marathon. Yeah! I was walking to the airport. My pussy was going like this because he had fucking blown it out for the last two hours. Guys will send me their tiny micro cocks and they want me to roast them. Like, that's the best day ever. Is that hard? Okay, why didn't you send me a photo when you get fully hard? There's the financial domination. Those are my other favorite. Oh, <laughs> Vic is always a person that I can go to, and if I was like, I want to get gang banged by like 30 dudes, he's somebody that I could come to and not be ashamed, afraid. Let's just say that you did feel like that one day. Mm -hmm. Vic, how would you deal with that? <laughs> oh yeah, what would you do? A big thank you to Danny Daniels Shop, who are sponsoring today's podcast. You can get a bit of everything on there if you're up for being on the naughty list this Christmas. This makes all of your other toy shops and you know naughty shops look very boring as you can see the lingerie you know if you're fancying a little bit of a nightgown vibe or if you just want to be a sexy zebra we can't we can't show that that's that's mental now that yeah yeah fantastic that is fantastic isn't it the model doesn't come with it i did check this is uh, a lovely little two-piece Danny is wearing here, just with a real strict messaging, just in case you weren't sure. I really feel like I shouldn't be allowed to show this, but I, I mean, it's not really anything. There's nothing wrong with this, is it? It's just someone with a massive O-ring in their mouth. Wow. Whips, paddles, and ticklers. If you're into a bit of the old bondage, we've all tried it, haven't we? This one could be the perfect Christmas gift for any of the women in your life. Probably not your grandmother or your mother. The F Machine Pro. Now, it's this sort of action, in it? And it never gets tired, really putting men out of business. I know some of you will be familiar with this sort of thing. Works like a charm. Well, it's a wand. Do you know what I mean? Cast a spell, come all over. They've also got the remote control one so that you can, like, you know, take your missus out for dinner or whatever and you'll be rushing her back into the taxi quickly because it's all going off. Ben Wabbles. I don't actually know what these are. I'm assuming you just shove them up them. Oh, wow. Some of this I just can't show you. Yeah, it's a bit too naughty, so I'm going to let you lot click the link in the description below and go and check out Danny Daniel's website now. It is fantastic. You can get something for everyone. Have a Merry Christmas. Fill your boots. Get as dirty as you want. Just be safe. Enjoy the podcast. Use my link. Click the link. Thanks. Cheers. The link. They're definitely fine. I've tested them. Welcome back to the True Jordy podcast. I'm joined by two lovely people today with familiar faces. We've had them on before. It's Danny Daniels and her husband this time, yeah. <laughs> uh, Vic Chipola. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. If anyone didn't see the last podcast, it did amazingly well with Danny, uh, world famous porn star at this point, award winning. <laughs> you actually won Performer of the Year. I was just looking into mm -hmm. the history. You know, you've done well when you get like the top girl of the industry. Yeah, I'm the biggest slut of the industry. Ima imagine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because that's a. Do you still have that trophy? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have quite a few. I think I'm up to like over 20 at this point. Yeah. yeah like 20. Yeah, I have 24. to like hide them when the in laws come over. Over, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know I was that good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we throw a sheet over the trophy yeah. case. <laughs> like, it's like it. and, uh, yeah, it, it was funny because you got up and you gave your acceptance speech, and I was like, "What are our porn acceptance speech oh awards like?" Gosh. And you were like, "I didn't think I was going to win this because I don't give up the booty hole." It was the worst. <laughs> it was the worst. Like I never, I, I try to not ever drink when I'm doing events. Okay. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to win because I don't give up the butt. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a whiskey, like whatever. And then I win. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, I think yeah. I went on stage and I was just like, yeah. I don't was the ego, the butt. was your ego a little bit like, because you're competing against a lot of pretty women. It's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And like I said, like I wasn't expecting it when I did. So I was, yeah, it, it took me a while. Like it probably didn't hit me until like five, ten minutes later. I was like, oh. Oh, and like it showed, I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah. guess I'm really good at sucking dick. This is cool. <laughs> I mean, he can verify. Dick, yeah. There's a nod there. Um, and yeah, for those who don't know, uh, you've done a lot of different types of porn. Yeah. I was, there was kink. There was all sorts of things. Yep. You, you were talking on uh, your videos about crying after orgasms <laughs> yeah. on set. I was like, wow, yeah. this is wild. 
I know. Yeah. And they would have to like check in with me, obviously, like for legality reasons. They'd be like, you know, especially with kink, they would have to like go in and be like, okay, you were crying. Are you okay? You know, did you, did you, are you where you had the safe for it? I was like, yeah, I was fine. I was just like living my best life, having like crying orgasms, like anyone would enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that would terrify me. If a, if a woman <laughs> after sex starts crying, I'm like, oh, oh shit. shit. I get reported. What about uh, during sex? It. What about during sex? You're like, uh oh. I would just immediately jump off. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Sorry, yeah. can we get you a cup of tea? Is everything all right? <laughs> yeah. uh, have you ever done that together? Is that something that's happened? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're just like a crier. She's a happy crier. I know, it sounds really horrible <laughs> when you say it out loud, but yeah, like I am, I'm very, like I'll probably cry, like I'm tearing up now, like when I laugh, yeah. or yeah. if I'm having a good time, I'm like a, like a... She's actually a I happy guess, cryer, not a sad cryer. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. funny, yeah. That's mad. Like even that, if I see like an emotional commercial, I'm just like, that's so sweet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like the well, the the list went on, and you pretty much like did a, a whole bunch of stuff before <laughs> you met Vic specifically. Yeah, yeah, and I think one of the reasons I wanted to have Vic on this time is a to understand the dynamic of the relationship, but also now more than ever in society, people are talking about men mm-hmm. who are with promiscuous women, as mm-hmm. they say, like in a, in a certain kind of way. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of want to explore this with you sure. guys um, because you, from what I remember you didn't meet in a oh he was a porn guy kind of way <laughs> no. you met in a normal way is that yeah. right we, yeah. met at, we met at a baby shower yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it so was nice. So hot. Yeah. So yeah. nice. Yeah. We it's met, like the most innocent thing you could ever do. I mean, it was a porn star's baby shower, but it was a baby wow. shower. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit weird now. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so was it like a love at first sight thing, or just uh, best friends at first? Yeah, sight. best friends. Yeah, we. I mean, there was. I think there was something there between the two of us, but neither one of us wanted to dive off that diving board right away mm. until it just kind of, kind of, kind of just happened. How did you know the porn star? I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I actually, the person that I was with somebody <laughs> who I was representing at the time, and I did, I knew who she was because of the person that I was with at the time, but I didn't really know her or the, I mean, I had kind of aged out of porn at that point. You know? Yeah. There's, I there's think I'm point. going through that. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, you, you kind of age out of it. At some point, you know, it's like, eh, okay, you know. Apparently <laughs> there's a statistic about that, like yeah. hit 40. Yep. And I'm in like my mid thirties and I'm like, I, I, I barely watch it. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. This has been like a thing, something I've done every day for like 20 <laughs> years. And now I'm like, I haven't, I can't remember the last time yeah, I watched it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. It's, it's usually like between 40 and 45, it drops off like dramatically. And wow. that, that's like a norm. Why do you guys, do you think there's a reason for that? Or I, I mean, maybe it's like a combination of things. Maybe um, you've seen it all. Maybe you've gotten to page <laughs> yeah. 256. You're like, you know, yeah. or maybe, uh, you know, girls getting in at 18, 21, whatever it is. Maybe it seems too young. Uh-huh. Um, there's like a bunch of different. Yeah, the life kind of happens at that point. Yeah. In your forties, your career is going, you're probably married, hopefully good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hopefully you're getting it good. And yeah, yeah. You're getting yeah. it on top. Yeah. You, you shouldn't need as much. Money. And then when you hit like 45, if you've had, kids like I did where they were young when you were young you're like okay these are the same age as my kid okay well now yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done now yeah, yeah. I'm done <laughs> I think also too it's like you as couples a lot I feel like have like I've noticed like as people get older fans get older they start to watch it as a couple more yeah so Absolutely. which that's I, pretty cool I think it's yeah. really cool I think yeah. it's really yeah. cool yeah uh, and like couples experimenting has become is, is becoming more and more normal obviously a, a, a guy I was hanging out with the other day told me like he was freaking out though. He was like, I've just found out a couple I know, they're swingers. <laughs> and like, he was really like traumatized by it. He was yeah. like, I couldn't be doing that. Like, and at the same time, that's never occurred to me. Mm-hmm. But I'm assuming it's pretty normal for you guys to know people who do that. Is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah we, we, I mean, a wide breadth from utterly vanilla to over the top. Mm-hmm. And the people who are over top tend not to be the adult film stars that we know. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, actually. Like the average person, you know, five doors down in Florida. That makes perfect <laughs> sense because he said they were a couple who hadn't experimented a lot, got together young. Mm-hmm. And then when they hit like, I don't know, mid thirties or like, oh, we have, we've missed out on a lot. 
Yeah. And then they felt like they wanted to do it as a team. Yeah. I love that. I actually, I love like the open communication and talking about it and being able to experiment together. Like, mm. I think that's something that is just so, so beautiful in its own way and knowing each other's limits and just like, I don't know. I just, I feel like that's something that's more popular now than maybe, you know, 10, 20 years ago. And the fact, whereas maybe before, oh, I want to do this. And it would maybe lead to like cheating or leaving or, you know, divorce uh, where now it's like, you know, I've never had a three way. Well, I've never been with a woman. You want to go find somebody at the bar? Like, <laughs> so. it is tricky as a man as well, though, for, like, because guys, I think women don't understand how sex is a, a chemical thing for us. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't mean to trigger some women out there, but like women have chemical things happen to them every month that mm -hmm. men have to sort of deal with sometimes. Skirt, right? and, and, and women don't understand, like we're going through some chemical stuff as well. And it, our brain, when we're out on the street and we see a beautiful woman, it's it's not a, a choice to have that thought. It's, yeah. It really is pre-programmed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's why we're all here. Women do that too. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I just feel like men are yeah. less... Uh, <laughs> we're filling up every day sort of thing. You know? we're, we're, yeah. we're also less subtle about it. Like oh, yeah. women are smart enough to keep it quiet. And we'll be like, damn. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, oh. They're beeping their horns. <laughs> yeah. exactly. um, so you're got, you guys are at this little innocent, well, quite innocent party mm -hmm. and you get talking were you how quickly before you spoke about the fact that you're in the industry? Oh no, I knew I knew yeah. she was in. So oh. I, yeah, I had I had known when we met that she was in the industry. Um, mo almost everybody in the room except me was in the industry. So, oh wow, yeah. So um, yeah, we actually became best friends for yeah. about a year and a half before we started dating. Yeah. Why do you think you'd had that period of best friends rather than going straight to relationship like a lot of people do? Um, I was in a relationship at the time. Yeah, so was I. Ooh. And I don't awkward. No, no, <laughs> no it wasn't. No, 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 it really wasn't. wasn't. Like... It doesn't. It sounds like it was, but it wasn't. I, I'm a publicist. I, I do PR for a living, and I did a lot of art PR. Mm. And my wife is a world-renowned artist. Actually, I mean, beyond just the adult film star, she's a. So she was showing me her artwork, and I'm like. Jesus, this is awesome. Uh -huh. I was like, let me help you out with some of that. And that's, we kind of became friends over that. And then I had a bad breakup mm -hmm. and she had a worse breakup. Mm -hmm. And then oh. we bonded over the fact that we literally <laughs> hate humans. <laughs> and it was that, like, that like, be quite healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And then it, it became, it was actually almost a good thing. It became a situation where we kind of realized we had this attraction to each other. Mm -hmm. and we're like, all right, here's all the crap. Yeah. You know, here it is. Here's all the problems. I'm not young anymore. This is what it is. And she went, well, yeah, well, here's all my crap. And we're like, hey, our crap matches. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> it like, just... It's like, this is what I want in a partner. This is what I want in bed. This is what I'm into. This is like my, like, you know, what I want for the future. And we literally like sat together and like had like almost like a business transaction, like, but like in the best way. You're checking off the, oh, that checks off a box. Yeah. Oh, that checks off yeah. Box. I think it's yeah. because we were friends first for so long that like when it, it was so organic when it even yeah. happens. And I literally looked at him and I was like, I should just date you. And he's like, okay. Yeah, and that's that was, how we started yeah, dating. <laughs> like literally. That's, that's like really healthy though, isn't it? Yeah. To get everything out in the open early. That's mm -hmm. when people who are a, knowing each other, uh, sorry, knowing themselves mm -hmm. and therefore able to just put it all out there. Yes. And a lot of people, they waste time when you're younger, especially pretending to be the version of you that is. Yes. I said yeah. that to him. I was yeah. like, everyone has bullshit for the first six months. And then, <laughs> and then the real person. And then, yeah. yeah, they like, they like, you wear this like fake facade. Like, even if you don't yeah. even know you're doing it, but for and us, and it Miss, just... Mr. Hyde pops out six yeah, months and later. Like, and you're like, where the hell is this guy? guy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's why, like, I'm, in my own life, I'm, I'm f a few months later, you're like, who the fuck am I dating here? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. But it's just yeah. the real them yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're like, um, oh, oh, so you, oh, yeah, you covered the bag of shit for a while. And it's like, oh, awesome, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. But, yeah. but then when you're having these moments where you're both in relationships and talking, do you think deep down you there was more there, but you were just like kind of putting it on pause? I don't, you know what? Yeah, maybe. Um, but we were, I mean, neither one of us were doing anything. I mean, most of our conversations were about her artwork, literally yeah. at that point. And, um, and it was, I mean, it was only like three or four months before I had to break up and then it was like a month later. And then we were friends for about a year. Mm -hmm. And, um, she came to New York uh, specifically to promote her artwork and I was getting her meetings mm -hmm. and it just, you know, it was like at one point, and I, we, we always talk about this one point in time, we both got a drink and we reached and kind of like, you know, like literally out of a movie, like our hands touched and we looked at each other and it was kind of like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> like literally both of us wanna, like, uh-oh. Because that's like, <laughs> like the biggest fear, right? Like you don't want to date your friend because then if it goes south, then you, you lose a friend. friend. Yeah, it's like. So, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. That's quite romantic. Yeah, yeah it, it really was. Like, it was it really cute was. and gushy and gross. Yeah, You know, disgusting. not what you expect from. And, uh, I like it, yeah. <laughs> and in a week, we're married six years. Yeah. 
literally wow. one week from today. Yeah. <laughs> and in terms of the toxic breakups that you both went through, that you mm-hmm. bonded over, um, if you don't mind me asking, not this, how toxic are we talking? Like, what was those experiences like for you? Oh, God, awful. Like, yeah. like, God awful. <laughs> I was like, up yeah. There. <laughs> um, and I, and I know I sent you my book, like in the front part of it, you're like, I started listing off just everything that I put up with. Mm. And, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of like comfort's like a beanbag chair. It seems like it's really comfortable and then you got to get up and you're like, oh, this sucks. And, and that's what happens is like, you just accept a little bit more shit, a little bit more shit, mm-hmm. a little bit more shit. And now all of a sudden you're six months in and you're like, what the hell am I doing? I and it's th- like, it literally hits nothing. There's nothing nothing about this relationship I like. I think both of our breakups were so bad uh, that bad. it put us in a mental state where we were like, fuck it. This is what I want. Like, I don't care if I sound shallow. Like, yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. I want this, this, and this. Like, I was, I think we were both in that. Because I think if one of us was and one of us wasn't, it wouldn't have worked. But because we both were just so bitter. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, look, I want A, B, and C. Yeah. Just don't give me shit. Can you be A, yeah. B, and C? And if not, yeah. it's cool. But like, that's what I want in a relationship. And so. Isn't it weird how sometimes you need to have like the worst possible experience <laughs> yes. in order to develop a zero tolerance policy? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, yeah. I definitely have been there where after that one, I'm like, ain't no way you're bringing me yeah. down. No, yeah. I'm not allowing anyone to do that again. Yeah. yeah you're like, I just went through all of that. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh, I'm not even getting halfway through that bullshit again. Yeah. <laughs> there also becomes a point in time when we did, and we were friends, and we had. I mean, she was living in California, I was in New York, so it wasn't like we were seeing each other and we were starting a relationship. It's a point in time where you have to get comfortable with yourself. Yeah. And you have to like look, be able to look in the mirror and go, you know what? I have no problem being alone until the right person comes. Mm-hmm. If the right person comes, it might not, but if the right person, because then you're comfortable in your own skin and you're not just looking for that relationship because I need something that fulfills me. Now I'm fulfilling myself. And also if and you're alone, yeah. if you're alone, I feel like you've got hope at least. Like when you're stuck in that shit relationship, oh, yeah. you've got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. When you're like settling for a human <sighs> being that you're like, oh God, but I guess I can't do any better. You're like... <laughs> If you're better off alone, just be alone. Like at that point, like my hand is great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> wow. Um, and then obviously you're still in the porn industry at mm-hmm. that point. Yeah. And how long after you and Vic became an item did you calm that down? Because you're still in porn, mm-hmm. but you stopped working with other male performers. Yeah, it's it was pretty quick, but it didn't have anything to do with Vic. It yeah. was like it was honestly like this like perfect like shitstorm of life that I was going through at the time, and I was wanting to move to New York and shoot my own content and focus on my own brands. So it honestly like just it, got, it was pretty quick on but not it wasn't like oh I'm so in love with this guy I'm not going to take any other dick it was just kind of like oh I'm I just happen to be in this place where I've fucked everyone I've wanted to fuck and like I'm ready to like move on and move to the next chapter and then he did, it was it's so funny how life works like that like and then it was mm-hmm. like oh I'm kind of ready to like you know do my own thing and move to New York and start my own businesses and then he just like popped up like something I hadn't even thought of and then yeah it wasn't I there was no we never had a conversation of yeah. okay you need to step out she was stepping out yeah we happened it was like ancillary it had yeah, literally it nothing of- to do with each other they were two different directions she she had told me months before that she was like you know i really kind of want to phase out of the industry there's really nothing much more that i can do with it um and i want to move on with my life and we never really it was never a situation where it was like okay you're gonna stop now or she was looking at me going i'm gonna stop now it just happened <laughs> yeah i think a lot of fans think that too and yeah. like what i want to point out is like yeah. a lot of fans like when because obviously when you first date someone you're not putting them on the internet right and so i think when i started posting him it happened to be along the same time that i stopped performing with other performers so people were like oh you got with vic and you stopped taking other days like no it just happened to work out that way yeah, <laughs> did, did they give you grief for that the fans because you have dedicated fans i did it I, I got a little bit at first but in in a way it kind of weeded out um, f- fans that just wanted to see me take as much like pussy and dick as possible, which is great. And I had that chapter in my life. Um, but it kind of brought in new fans. Like I have a huge amount of couples that watch my porn, um, fans that just love to watch me be me. Like, cause, be- cause now it's like, I- I- I'm fucking at home. I'm on my couch. <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> real life, you know? Yeah, people love that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of like, it, it kind of just like swung the pendulum in like a different way. But yeah. didn't you say, 
that you have like a, a real cult following in India or something. Oh, yes. yeah. Because yes. yes. I've yes. seen you the weekend getting pictures with fans. <laughs> There's a lot of Indian dudes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was funny. I did, I actually did, um, I had my products in a, a Shop Vibes Pleasure Boutique and um, they're outside this, out of London, outside of London, excuse me. And I had fans drive. The, some fans say they're like four hours. Another I set of fans see. said six hours each way. Well, I was up, like, up near the Scottish border, they were coming down to <gasps> Alsford or was, whatever. We, I mean, I, we were. I was like, we were. What? We were in the south, and they were coming down. They're like, oh, we just wanted to. And they were. I mean, they were all. Yeah. They're always nice. In seven years that we've been together, I can tell you we've had only one interaction with a fan that was annoying and it wasn't even like obnoxious. It was just annoying. Can you explain that? It, the guy was like half drunk and like, oh, what's it like to fuck a porn star? And I'm like, well, yeah, it's something you'll never know, you know, like <laughs> yeah. when, but that, every other time they've been really respectful. Hey, do you mind? And they always ask me, do you mind? Oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really happy for the fans, but never. He's my giveaway. It's yeah, annoying. I'm giveaway. <laughs> His big old bald head yeah. in a bar and people see him. They look and, like, and they go, could that be? And then oh, they look and go, oh, yeah. It's <laughs> like, like, oh, it's he's, he's quite a <laughs> memorable geezer. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> but, but like driving six hours to see you, right? Like I'm yeah. a YouTuber. I keep my clothes on, but even that would freak me out a little mm. bit. It was, it, it was, I didn't know. I was speechless. I was just like six hours each way. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they were. That's, I've okay. done that drive. It's a, it's a long drive. Yeah. It's like, it was really, it was honestly really, really <coughs> flattering if anything, but I was just kind of like, I don't want to, I wouldn't drive six hours for anything. Do you know, do you know what, what my brain goes to? <laughs> if you'll drive six hours for that, what what else would you do? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, where, where, how far is this? <laughs> what would you do for the Klondike bar? Just you know trying to I mean? figure this out here. You know, it's like, scary. Yeah. But, so had you watched Danny? I'm going to call you Danny. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I know that's your daughter. Yeah, yeah, ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ironic. That's a whole yeah. other thing. There's a whole other story. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, so had you watched Danny's uh, porn videos? No, never. Why? I have it live. Even now. Even, even now. Yeah. Especially now. <laughs> Why especially, especially now? now? Because I have it live. Why do I need mm. to watch it on video? <laughs> so. um, I think that would really surprise people, though. Like, mm -hmm. when I, like, I think I uh, heard you say that in an interview. I remember thinking, wow. Because, like, if if I was friends with a porn star, yeah. and then if I'm dating a porn star, <laughs> like, just let's yeah. just put this scenario together. It's that, like, curiosity more than anything. It's mm -hmm. not even, like... It's not even necessarily a dirty thought. I'm yeah. just like, I got to see what's been yeah, going like on. Yeah, like what scenes does she like to do? I mean, yeah. like don't what? get me wrong. I, I have lovely people who send me photos on a regular <laughs> yeah. basis, and I'm and I always laugh. It's like, do you think I didn't know this existed? Oh, yeah. right? oh with it, with it. Yeah, so, yeah like, so dudes I, DM you. Yeah, DM, DM. They're like, oh, look at your wife, and I'm like, yeah, okay, great, congratulations, you found the photo that's you know on Twitter. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm thr thrilled for you. But it, <laughs> I, I I find them in this very weird position because we do have a lot of friends in the industry and they've become very close friends and some of them are they're like family so most guys would love to see their wife's hot friends naked I can't not see it and it's horrifying really? it's like yeah it's like you know aesthetically beautiful and emotionally crippling at the same time yeah wow. so you're a really interesting dude <laughs> I say this respectfully like, you're, you're quite a lovely guy but equally uh, different, right? Because <laughs> I just can't imagine anyone I know being able to take that approach. Just the 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 curiosity, but also then the other things. And you obviously don't think like most men, because I think most men a couldn't be with a porn star. Yeah, but also they couldn't even date a porn star without wanting to see everything. Oh, yeah. and I remember this brings me back to I don't know why I'm talking about this, but a <laughs> mate of mine had some old videos of him with his previous girl on his like computer or whatever. Yeah, like home movie situation. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, a whole bunch of them, like 30. <laughs> and his new girl, who was like, he was having a kid with and all that, found that. <gasps> oh. oh. And, and I said to him, like, what did she do? Yeah. Like, did she take your approach? Just, yeah. You know, I don't need to say this. This was before me. No, she watched every single second because she had to know. I'm yeah. going to fuck him better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what women are. So like, I think that's a woman thing to be fair, but yeah. like, you must have some quite, a bit of mental strength there to just block that out and just be like, you know what? It's, a, it's not even that I block it out. I just don't care. Mm. I literally Why don't, don't care. care. I don't know. Right? I mean, I wish I could tell you <laughs> yeah. that I had a reason. I just don't care. It's like, okay. And people, I, I mean, I've heard this in a bunch of times and I'm like, look, Kieran Lee, who was on your podcast, right? Had his dick insured for a million dollars. She had him. Mm. She yeah. chose me. 
I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I, I like, I'm fine. I mean, I got. I've okay. just realised I've actually seen your dick before. Yeah, um, yeah right. Because yeah. I followed, yeah. I followed Danny on Twitter. And I'm like, there's my mate's dick. Yeah. This is weird. I mean, that that now that's See, a little that's, on the outside. But it's, that's there's the key. nothing wrong with it. It's, it's perfectly dope. fine. But you're right. Yeah. That's the key. Is you were like, it's weird. I'm like, yes, yeah, because like it's like all my my close friends in the industry that come and stay at our house and stuff. Yeah. It's it's a different dynamic. I think people think that like off camera we're all just like laying around in lawn having pillow fights and it's not it's just it's a job like anything else so for him it's like you know seeing like Shri DeVille naked who's like one of my best friends and she's like, like I mean like Shri's like a like sister it. to me oh yeah, no, yeah. Oh, she God. Up, right? okay. yeah she's and, and I'm like I can't like open up Twitter when I'm like because oh. like usually like, I, I think break. <laughs> the thing I love about Vic is that he doesn't care and I think people assume that if you're in porn you can't date what we call civilians because <laughs> they are jealous. They'll ask you to quit the industry they'll, or they'll just like fuck you for the story. And that's the common, is that the norm? The norm, okay. yeah. It's like, I'm not sure, you know, oh, it, it's either they're going to be somebody that wants to fuck me for the story, that thinks they can handle it and then can't, that hears it from their friends like, oh, you know, your wife's a porn star or your girlfriend's a porn star. It's like, and then they can't, they think they can mentally take it and they can't. So when you start to date, so once I, when I was with Vic, I was like, oh, he actually doesn't give a fuck. Like, it's so freeing to not have to be worried or stressed or constantly just like, oh my God, is, you know, if Johnny Sins comes up to, uh, comes up to us at a convention, is he going to be like kind of, you know, straightened up, you know, but it's like, no, it's no, not like I mean, that at all. Like Kieran's a perfect example. We've had drinks together and stuff and laughed our asses off. So it's, and I'm yeah. super comfortable in, yeah. your, in your masculinity. Yeah, because I've mean, dated I, porn stars. I fuck porn stars. I've dated civilians. Like I, I chose him. Like he's the person I want to be with. Like I've obviously fucked enough to know what I want in bed. And so it's yeah. like. And you, obviously your age could have helped with this because you're at a point where you're a bit wiser. You're not in a, you're not in that early years masculinity where you have to prove yourself to everyone right. you've mm -hmm. proven what you need to prove but you've now also got involved as i've said how did that feel the first time you're like this my dick's gonna be on the internet <laughs> like <laughs> how was you that want, you want to laugh i didn't care I yeah didn't, I, I, mean, I was, was the one that was yeah, like emotional. she was all she was all worried about it and i'm like look this is this is what you do mm -hmm. I, you know, this is what we're going to be, then just, let's just do it and move on. I, I'm bizarrely, and I don't know why, I never grew up jealous in my life. I have a, I have two brothers who are younger than me, and no one can ever tell you that my, especially my middle brother, because we're four years apart, we never had a fight, ever. There is not one member of our family, because I didn't care. Like, he would win trophies, I would be proud of him. Like, he became a doctor, I was proud of him. I didn't, I never got that, I've never had that jealous feeling over anything. Even business partners would tell me, like, if if they went into the refrigerator and ate, it, ate something I wanted, I'd be like, oh, good, did you like it? I just, I'm not that person. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. I don't I, know I why. Because yeah, yeah. when I've reached out to you, and just said, because you're a businessman, yeah. I'm like asking you things. Yeah. That, you're very generous, very given. Yeah. I'm sure you could verify that. He's very giving. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Oh, like you said you were worried about him yeah I was the one that was stressed out about it like it actually took quite a while to be like okay like I would be like are you sure I was like he's like let's just shoot con like who cares let's just shoot content just use my dick like what's fine and I was like and I <laughs> took I was dick. the one yeah just, he's just, like, I mean, like, I mean yeah. if you think about it now it's like guaranteed sex twice a week yeah. like oh yeah no honey I'm here for you I got you yeah. it's no problem I'm just gonna be a supportive like, husband I'll, I'll be here you know? <laughs> yeah but it, I was the one that it took me like a, quite a few weeks to be like okay like it, is this something that, you know, I, I, I felt responsible, you know, because this wasn't like he, him being like, Oh, he wouldn't I, have done this without you. Yeah. yeah and I yeah. didn't want to like, I wanted to make sure that it was something that you were okay with because I've talked about this before, but like porn is a life sentence. Like it's not something that you do once. And then it's just like the internet is always forever. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to make sure, but as and you I mean, can I, see, he didn't yeah, give any care. shit. And you marry in, you know, I mean, look, I, I, and I, and I get it. And I like even age and what, you, you got to know what you're getting into. You got to know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm marrying not just an adult film star, a person who's been in the top 25 for a decade. I mean, we don't go anywhere that she isn't noticed. We got stopped at the Vatican for a photo. And that's wow. a true story. I mean, yeah. like we got stopped. At the, we yeah. can't go anywhere without her being noticed. So I know what I'm signing up. You have kids though. So, yeah. so yeah. was, was there a worry that you were like, like from your side, like, 
Oh my god! Like, are they daughters? They're adults. adults. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. adults. I don't have I kids. I have adults. <laughs> okay, yeah, but even even then, um, was that a conversation that you had, or did you just do it? That no, that was a conversation her and I had about it. Like, you know, your kids have to be okay with it. My kids didn't care. I mean, honestly, I, Can I'm you describe like, that conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need no, to know. So, it, 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 <laughs> bizarrely, it don't, was. Don't give too much of it because I'm very pro- I'm like I'm, I'm very, very protective. Like, very protective I'm very protective. protective so I'm like, so um, I, there, there's a running joke story that when she. He came to New York the oh, first yeah. time. Uh, my, both my kids were there. I have a son and a daughter. Both my kids were there. And they were looking at the two of us. And privately, they had a bet when we were going to start dating. They just saw it. They wow. knew. They yeah. just knew. And uh, my daughter won. And uh, she'll appreciate that when she watches this <laughs> podcast. And she won the bet. My son still owes her the money. So she'll yeah. even appreciate that, too. <laughs> but yeah, but they, they and like her and my daughter are very close. And my, my son and I are very close. And it just... You know, it, it, they were smart enough to realize dad's happy and happy dad makes for, for a good dad. So, wow. um, they're and so that's, liberal, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they yeah, would, better. they would chill about it. And I mean, you know, everybody in the beginning was, were, were, you know, oh, you sure this is going to, and then everyone I, that I, I came across on your side of our relationship, they all said like, we just, we just love seeing Vic happy. Yeah. Like we don't care. Like no one, I mean, no it was one. very few people, like very few people in anything would, was, were no judgy it. comment. Yeah. No, I mean, like we you had know. we had our share of them, but they were from the outside, not from like good close friends. It's the same people that would judge me for doing porn anyway, mm. you know. So I'm like, okay, I'm moving on, you know. And I mean, I th- oh, it's shock and awe. Like <laughs> the first six months of the relationship, um, people were looking at it, going, eh. and then testament to my wife, she made everybody comfortable. Everybody's like, oh my god, she's awesome, she's great. Look at how happy Vic is. It's not, you know, it's not what we it's not what we were expecting it to be, which is always the answer we get with this as you move forward. Yeah, your energy uh, from yeah. following you guys for years now <laughs> is, it is very close. It isn't like, you know, I, I guess people, if they look from the outside in, they'd look at your relationship and think, oh, he's a sugar daddy or something. That was, well, that was big the big one in the thing. beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of people thought I left the industry to be with the sugar daddy. And I was like, yeah. I, I could see I just why, like old guys. Like, just let <laughs> me live my old guy life. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm Splenda at best. I, I, can also, I, sugar. <laughs> I can also understand the fact that like, you know, if you were to say, I'm fucking a porn star, my girlfriend's a porn star, everyone is instantly going to think the same thing. Oh, that'll be over in a month. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, oh, you know, it's just like going to be like a fun little thing that like, you know, so I think once we got together for an extended period of time, and especially now that we've been married for almost six years, people are like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you you're know. not Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I know people, for those who don't remember, that was a really <laughs> famous was, woman yeah. who went out with a 90 year old yeah, guy. Yeah, very yeah. different. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think they, I think they were together like I'm six just, months and he died. Oh, yeah, she was, was like, yeah. Yeah. I'm just with him for his AARP uh, car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. She wanted the free cooler from yeah. AARP. But you know. as it happened, when I was doing my research, apparently when you met, you were involved in this Charlie Sheen thing. Yeah, that was yeah. that was how, that was kind of how we met. The person that I was representing was one of Charlie's exes, and the whole shit hit the fan. Kind okay, of thing. Okay, so yeah. so can we talk a little bit about that? Because that's quite a fascinating story yeah. in in the industry, right? So Charlie Charlie was very and Ricky Gervais even yeah. joked about this like if, if that was a Monday then what was his New Year's Eve like right, right. he was like <laughs> hanging out with porn stars yeah. and all the drugs and then obviously HIV hits was that right mm-hmm. yeah That's he was HIV problem. positive yeah he I guess he was he was HIV positive for a while and had hit it for a while and I was representing somebody who at the time um she he had hit it from and they were together and they had gotten engaged I mean this whole this whole relationship is because of Charlie. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> was like, wow. It's the only <laughs> successful relationship you've been involved in? <laughs> yeah, for maybe. Yeah. You know, Charlie, Charlie no. and I are about almost like almost a year apart. Like, was, he's like a year. It was a year really big me. problem in the industry yeah. because, you know, when you have men and women going out and, you know, like, like well, when we got together, like I made him get tested before we fucked. Yeah. And a lot of people don't do that. And a lot of people go out and they bring in like diseases into the industry and then we have all these like breakouts and then the industry has to shut down so he was like a massive problem yeah. <laughs> but it's like yeah, what, it was, what was it like for those women who were infected by him do you think I, I, I don't, don't, I, yeah, I don't I know don't a lot know. of them very closely so I can't speak on their behalf and I'm um, not sure that there's ever been really a case of somebody who's been infected by mm-hmm. him I think I, I really don't know that for a mm. fact um, but it was something that was kind of like hush hush and hidden and it yeah. was it was a little I, I mean this whole thing is odd <laughs> because when you're fucking you know five to fifteen people a week and you hear about this and you're like 
you hold your breath. They're like, as I've always been very responsible in the industry, I've always gotten tested. I've always made the people that I was fucking on the side get tested. So to be, you know, to hear something, oh, there's going to be that, that whole scandal happen. I was like, here we go. Like, hope my test doesn't come up. I hope I don't have to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, it's, it's bizarre because I know my age, my generation, mm-hmm. getting tested was not a big thing because I lived through wasn't HIV, it was AIDS. You got it, you died, period. That was it. You know, I was in school when that was like really scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So getting tested was something you either did or you got, you know, you were you were taking your life in your hand. So when she asked me to get tested, I was like, yeah, no problem. And she was like, really? I'm like, yeah. And it's like, I grew oh, up with that. that's the other conversation. I grew up with that, yeah. And I do know that, and I've had this conversation with kids and family and friends. And you're like, oh, I don't want to get tested. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, get tested. You out of it. I don't want to know. You don't want to know? Yeah. Oh, I don't have any <laughs> symptoms. What? It was like, mm. that's, that's insane. Get tested. Be safe. I mean, that's just, that's key. Yeah. And just knowing your status and like, especially if you're, at, you know, you have partner, partners, like, why not know? And now a word from our sponsors, because the True Jordy YouTube channel would not be able to make as many great podcasts each month as we do if it wasn't for our great friends at Manscaped. And with Christmas coming up, there is no better gift a man can receive than the kit from Manscaped. And thanks to Tesco's, it's even easier because they are stocking Manscaped across their stores in the UK. So all you last minute shoppers, I've got you covered. You can pick up the Lawnmower 4.0, which is one of their best selling products. It's an electric body trimmer that's waterproof, cordless, and designed specifically for the most sensitive areas of the body. It's a fourth generation trimmer with advanced ceramic blades and skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts. And seriously, this product is fantastic. And Tesco also has the Essentials 3.0 kit. That includes the Lawnmower 3.0 and includes a bottle of Crop Preserver, which is the anti chafing ball deodorant. So what you're waiting for get to your nearest tesco's and make sure that your balls are shining like christmas baubles you get it because of the <laughs> enjoy it enjoy it but enjoy the podcast as well and in terms of marriage like marriage is traditional yeah, yeah. and obviously you don't come from a traditional working <laughs> yeah. background and you'd already been yeah. and had a family so why did you guys think marriage fit you well that's a really good question um I, you know, it's funny. I, I think when we first got together, we weren't sure we were going to get married. We were mm-hmm. just going to. And then it just seemed right. It just seemed correct. You know, it was like one of those things where it's like we really wanted to do this. And it, it's not like the piece of paper means anything, but the ceremony does. And having your family there means something. And having our friends and the people that we care about meant something. The piece of paper is just piece of paper. It doesn't really. Yeah, it wasn't even that. like a second thought of if I should marry this person it was just like wow like even when we got together I'm like this is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with like it was like an instantaneous yeah. like did I just like knew and, and you didn't have to get married though like a lot of, uh, you know, so it was it that ceremony and the vows and, and wanting to commit to each other so that you have that feeling of security there yeah I, I don't even know if it was a feeling of security it's more like a feeling of love that we wanted to share with our friends and family mm-hmm. members and have everybody there and have her family there my family there and it wound up being it was I mean it was a beautiful weekend and it meant more like I said the piece of paper is just piece of paper yeah mm-hmm. like even if it wasn't like binding us together I still would have done it just like a celebratory of like yeah. our love not to get all mushy no like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean it was it, no it's because because that when I was contemplating your dynamic i was like mm-hmm. you know you don't need marriage you know but you obviously felt the need for it in in a in a sense and it's a, especially with you danny because you're just you you dance to your own tune and i've <laughs> i found that from meeting you you'd like you do everything your own way mm-hmm. and i just wondered what it was about it you know what i mean but that, that makes sense and in your head when you took those vows were you like and it's definitely over for me shooting with other men in, in that moment. Like, maybe not in that very moment, but like around that time. No, it's, I think people associate marriage with like monogamy. And even though we are monogamous and that's just something that works for us, like Vic is always a person that I can go to. And if like down the road, I was like, I don't know, I want to get gang banged by like 30 <laughs> dudes. Like, I think he's something that I can come to and not be ashamed, afraid like we can always have an open and honest conversation and getting together and getting engaged, getting married. Like that didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind that anything in the relationship would change. Let, let's just say that you did feel like that one day. Mm-hmm. Vic, how would you deal with that? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, what would you do? It would definitely be a conversation that we would have to have. <laughs> there is, you know, it's like we've had this conversation a bunch of times going into it. Like, did you want to go back to the industry? Mm-hmm. And most of the time it ends like this. 
yeah, I know what it's like to bang other people. I, you know, I, it's never going to be yeah. the same as being with you. Why do I want to ruin what we have? Because it's like the plate. You throw it on the ground, you break it, you can't put it back together. You can glue it back together, but it still got cracks. Yeah. So yeah. that's, so that's what always. What do you mean by that? Just a bit. It, it's like if you have, a, if you're in a monogamous relationship and you want to be monogamous, the moment you break that, you can't get that back. It's, it's not coming back. So we've had this conversation. It's like, why do I want to do this? just for the sake of doing this. Cause that's all it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I mean, look, we're, we're guys, yeah. we've been around the, we've been around the block a few times. You've had those times where you've banged somebody and afterwards you went, yeah, what did I do that for? You know, and, and women have the same thing. You're like, what did I do that? And you can't get back what you've lost by doing that. So yeah. same thing with us. It's like, we've had this conversation many times and she's even said it. She goes, and it was like, even if it's like, oh, go back and do girl, girl. It's like, yeah, it's the same thing. I'm bi. I fuck so much. And I love, I love women. I'm yeah. bisexual. Like, but I've just fucked so much pussy that I'm like, I know what pussy's like. I've had plenty of it. That's you know, I loved it, but I, I it's did, just the reason I'm asking you specifically yeah. this because I know people watching will will. I'm interested in where the line is with you because you've obviously you've been perfectly fine with yeah. your previous um, life in in porn when you were active in that way, and you've not even felt the need to watch them. But it feels like you the line is now moving forward. Okay, we're in this together now, and that you do want that monogamy moving forward. Then at this point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, we, I think we both have had this discussion and it's not even it's not even that it would bother me if she went back in the industry. It was just something like as we keep going further and further in, there's just something incredibly loving and sweet about it. And it's I I personally can't even imagine finding somebody else. I, at this point, it's like I look at them and I go, yeah, that's a really attractive woman, but. I'm not ruining this no. for yeah. what my. I'm the one that's like, you want to fuck her? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, Should be like, you want to fuck her? And I'll, and, and, and I'll literally go, great. I was like, so I'll get into this. You'll have sex with a woman. It'll be like screwing a wet mop. And I'll be like, okay, now I've ruined this, this beautiful thing that we had for a horrible sexual experience. Wonderful. That just doesn't make sense. It might not be horrible. It might not but be if horrible. It, it, but I think if it is, it would be. It's never going to have the same emotional connection. Yeah, that's just never going to be there. So <laughs> it, it's it's very interesting that that is quite precious to you. The the keeping what you've built up. Yeah, yeah. So because at first, you know, people will expect you to just be super. I don't care about any of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's there's guys out there who are with porn stars who are just like, yeah, yeah. do what mm-hmm. you want. Oh yeah. I don't think like what our relationship is is any in any way the right for everyone. Mm. I think it just works for us. Like for me, I did everything. I had all the sexual experiences, so I don't even feel a need, but I can also understand why couples that haven't experienced it would like to explore that together. The body count thing. Oh, are yeah. you are you guys aware of your own body count? Oh God, God no. <laughs> I think no I idea. stopped counting at like five hundred. I <laughs> so, and mostly it's women. I fuck so many women. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I saw that. That's like the big trend now. Body mm-hmm. count. It, it, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, because you know, and when you're Sicilian, body count has a whole different. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh. like <laughs> exactly. It's like oh, which body count are we yeah. talking about here? So, but it's it's I I mean I always laugh. It's like guys worry about girls' body counts, but Guys can literally be like a horny dog on a street somewhere. Come on, give me a break. You know, it's got to go both ways. I mean, it really has to go both ways. You can't look at a woman and go, oh, my God, you've been with 20 people. You're you're a horrible slut. Meanwhile, you've been with 60. <laughs> and I, I, I like, are you kidding me? I think logically that makes perfect sense. But for the, the vast majority of people, for whatever reason, you can correct us if you think I'm wrong. I just think men care more about feeling like, oh, this woman is – you know, mine and hasn't been around that much. Like men are very territorial, or, 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 or you know, misogynistic. We'll go well, with that yeah. word too. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand that mentality, but my I, men men have said that to me in the past. But my counter is always, wouldn't you want a woman to be with you and know that your dick, the way you fuck, the positions that you both like, the way you know, wouldn't you want her to experience other dick? Because if you're the only dick she's ever fucked, and she wakes up someday and goes, you know. I really want to put a 12 inch dick inside me just to see what it's like. And then she cheats. Yeah. So it, for me, I, and like for me personally, it's like I would rather my partner go out and experience everything. And then I would know and feel secure in our relationship because I'm like, you did it all. You saw the menu. You tried every platter. I'm glad that you chose me, yeah. you know? So yeah, I, I, I always, and there's a part of me that always wonders too. And I, and I did the, my, in my book, I wrote about guys realize that the only place that they're vulnerable 
is sex. Women can make them do anything with sex. A guy will go places with a, with a heart on. He wouldn't go with a loaded 45. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, I, mean, I mean, I blow Vic to do TikToks with yeah, me, right, so exactly. it works out. It was like, you know, right? So I think that men at what heart. Look so happy? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I think men at heart just want to control that mm. in some way because they know that's where they're most vulnerable. I mean, there really is. It's like if a woman wants a man to do something, they know they have one avenue that they, and they don't even have to have sex with him. They just have to flirt with him half the times and they'll do stupid shit. So, yeah. and I think that's why they, you know, they ratchet down on it. I think that's why even governments and men in power ratchet down on sex because they're afraid of it. You make really good points. And I, I definitely think there's a lot of truth in that. I think the, the the fear from some men is like, oh, if she is promiscuous, then can I trust her to not be? Because cause, cause as men, we know we can't switch it off. Right. Mm-hmm. And men know what dogs we can be. So yeah. like, well, if you can't switch it off, then we're really fucked, you know? <laughs> and there is a little bit of fear there. And one of the things about porn that's really interesting right now is this taboo going on of letting people fuck your wife. Uh, oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. The Adam 22 uh, thing. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yeah. the Lena Paul, Lena the Plug, sorry. Yeah. The plug thing, yeah. Yeah, he set that up where you know, they'd been doing girls together mm-hmm. and she'd been off limits and then out of nowhere they dropped this trailer of her in the, the big black guy. Yeah, yeah. And it, they, I've never seen the internet care that much about porn. I noticed, I, I don't know the whole story, but I did see some of it on like Twitter and stuff and I was like, I was actually really surprised. Oh, that, yeah. Like... Th- he, Great PR thing. Yeah, I don't know what his response. <laughs> it was genius. It was I don't know what his PR response thing. was, or if it was staged, or if it was real, or what. But I was actually really surprised that she got so much shit for it. She, he got the shit. Oh, for he it. got a lot. Oh, he, he got. got, he got oh, okay, oh my okay. god, he got, he got raked. Over Why? Because the, the guy is a big cock. Um, like what was the? I, I think I, it's really hard to explain. It's just so, so, <laughs> I feel like you've just landed on this planet. It's mad. Yeah. No, because. <laughs> Adam is a podcaster as well. So okay. he's kind of dipping into two different uh, worlds in porn and podcasting, mm-hmm. even hip hop. And So his background is podcasting and, yeah, and he, then he got with his partner and she's in porn. And yeah. Okay. And so they started making porn together and it was kind of seen as like, Mm. We had for a podcast to do this, but fair play to you. Like you're getting yeah. all these women, mm-hmm. yeah, and then out of nowhere, so he he kind of I, I imagine had some pats on the back, and then when he decides to let her do her thing, a lot of the hip hop guys, the podcast guys, yeah, like, you I can totally pussy. see it. You went from being on the top of the hill and getting all this pussy, oh, yeah. to being now like, oh well, your girl's going out and getting other dick. So he like like I feel like in their eyes, maybe he like fell off the top of the mountain type situation. Is yeah. that like what yeah, the? He, and I think he handled it as best as anyone can by yeah. leaning into it and yeah. getting and making more jokes than anyone else did yeah. so like he's tweeting out like if you really love your wife you should let her fuck other guys yes. yeah, and like that's that. what I was gonna that's exactly what I was thinking I was like I actually would much rather hang out with that guy than anybody else because at least he's letting her do whatever and she honest, wants yeah, like safely honest, yeah. I, I personally didn't find it a big deal because yeah. it's not like look if, if one of my mates privately was like yeah she's got a fella coming around this weekend <laughs> like I'd be like what but it's Adam 22 like it's what he does he's in the porn game yeah. mm-hmm. but he quite geniusly played on the taboo of cuckolding and all of this sort of stuff and mm-hmm. then whipped up the shitstorm and I think even the wedding photos went out like a month before oh. so he's like oh I'm going to drop these wedding photos oh, yeah. and it looked like a beautiful <laughs> wedding yeah. the most perfect wedding yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you've got her bending over a month later so I do feel like maybe this was a bit of a genius I mean we're talking about it right now right mm-hmm. yeah. um, and he made a shitload of money but that's why I wanted to ask you guys like whether you'd consider doing something something similar because it just broke the internet, you know? And and everyone knows you guys as this couple yeah. now. I've never been one to... I don't know. I, and like, I don't know if this is true because I don't know enough about the story, but I don't know if this is like a play to make a bunch of money. And for me, I've never made my decisions in porn based upon how much money I would make. I've always done what I enjoyed. So even the idea of selling... I hate to say this because I don't know if this is true, but selling my soul to do that scene, if it is for the press or it is for the money it just wouldn't be worth it to me but Mm. if she was doing it in the sense of i really just want to explore other options of human beings even though we're married i just want to like i want to know what other experiences are like i feel like that i'd be all for but depending on i would never be like well you know if i do this scene i can like pretend it's something else and then make a bunch of money i just i don't know for me it was like i've got into it to get laid (laughs) 
But you were pretty. You could have gotten laid out of here. <gasps> no, but it was a safe she way to no do game. it. I, ha- I was so no shy when I got into <laughs> porn and I did it because I, I had no game and I wanted to explore my ex- sexuality safely. The idea of you being shy. I know. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm actually really very interviews. shy in real life. Yeah, she's actually very shy. <laughs> she, I just watched an interview last night doing my research. She was like, yeah, I've had a fist in a, my fist in a man's ass, a fist in a woman's ass. Oh, yeah. I'm like I, shy. Once I put my fist yeah. in a guy's ass and I clapped in there like a seal. <laughs> but I'm very shy. But she is very shy. <laughs> And it's not, it's not, I can't even, I can't, I can't even like sit here and bullshit. She is actually pain. I'm the extrovert. She's painfully shy. If she has to do appearances and stuff, it's like. Yeah, I'm really. Dragging. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Even, even coming here and she knows you and likes you and stuff like that. Even that she was like, just a little nervous, like then, then normal. And it's, and it's funny. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. You really are carefree. Vic. Oh, yeah. I really don't give a <laughs> fuck, bro. No. Yeah, I, I crossed the 50 line and, and all my fucks went away. Yeah. They were just gone. You know? Yeah. I feel like I'm hitting that early because you know that you yeah. see these sort of wiser older dudes who they start coming out with stuff and you're mm-hmm. like oh you're at that age now where you're mm-hmm. just like this is me deal with it yeah. I really feel like I'm hitting that I right think it's now. commendable yeah. I like that I like the no fucks given the true no fucks given oh, like, no, yeah. I really I really think that's like the ultimate like enlightenment is when you just don't you know, care it, 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 it's funny because there are I mean there are definitely things that I care about I just have learned not to care about what other people think mm-hmm. that, I just, that's I just don't care I just you know I'm, I guarantee you there'll be a million comments underneath here making all kinds of stupid statements and I just I probably won't even read them and if I do read them I'm just going to laugh and say okay congratulations you you had your five sentences in there <laughs> <laughs> good for you I mean like uh, you know if you were uh, a person in my life who I, I was like, let's say you were like my my old man, for yeah. example. My old man turned around to me in one day and he was like, yeah, I'm dating a porn star now. I'd be like, hey. Yes! <laughs> <I'll done that. laughs> Fuck it. You know? Cause I, and I do think that it really helps you that you're a wiser guy than, because I, if you had met Danny, let's say you were in your 30s and that version of you had met Danny, Ooh. how would you have handled it? Because it's one thing being your age when you've had all these years to realize. Well, I, did, I mean, she would have been a little too young. At no, I, I said, <laughs> well, let's just say <laughs> yeah, there was, the insecurity you know was a bit higher yeah. back then. I don't know. Um, I've never, like I said, I've never been a jealous person ever, like over anything. So I don't know. I think uh, the only difference would have been is at that point I was way more, about my career and about hustling and about moving things. So I tended to, and it was reason for my split up with my exes. I tended to put my work first and my relationship second. And I learned later on that that's not the way it should be. But other than that, I don't think I would have had a, I still wouldn't have had a problem with where we, you know, what this wasn't. I just don't, I just never cared. You know, I, ne- I never cared about my girlfriend's body counts, my wife's body count. I, I just didn't care. Yeah. You, you mentioned in your book, um, had a read of that last night, made about halfway through. Fantastic, by the way. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> Dick pics happen to <laughs> find their way into Danny's um, inbox a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know you said you don't care about it. A bit weird though, isn't it? Um, oh, it's bizarre. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand why guys do it. Mm. I don't. It's like, first of all, most of the time they send them. I mean, I have a dick and I've looked at these things and went, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm the one that shows them. Like, look at this one. Look at this like, one. Is that like an anthill in Texas? What is that thing? You know, and it's like, I, and I don't, you know, it's, I, I think it's, somewhere in the book I wrote, I said, the world would be a better place if guys realize instead of sending a dick pic, they should just send a text message that says, oh, you're so pretty today. How's your day going? And women sent a picture of them getting a coffee going into a Starbucks. The world would be a better place because guys are visual and women are emotional. And that's just fact. The other way, the other way happens all the time. Women will send 500 texts and the guy will want to write, stop texting me and then delete and send something else. And then the girl, you know, and the guy will send a dick pic and the girl will be like, oh, dude, come on, man. I wouldn't send a dip, dick pic to my wife unless she asked like three times because even then I wouldn't be sure she really wanted it. So <laughs> I don't get it. And then you have guys like Jeff Bezos sent dick pics. I mean, is your bank account not your dick pic? I mean, what do you need <laughs> to send? Trail, bro. I mean, the, the zeros matter more than yeah, the inches, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's like you needed your, your Jeff Biz, you needed to send a dick pic? I mean, I don't That's get it. wild. That just shows that even the smartest man out here is as dumb as a Dude. fuck. No, without <laughs> you know what I mean? I had, a, I had a, a distant relative wrote a book called The Basic Laws of Human Stupidity. 
And literally the first rule was stupidity knows no status. There are stupid doctors and there are stupid businessmen and there are just stupid knows no status. And yeah, when a guy has his, what is it, the Robin Williams joke, the man, uh, God gave men two head and only enough blood to run one at a time. Oh yeah. You got a hard on in your hand. You're not thinking, thinking straight. I don't it's care gone. how beautiful your cock is. It doesn't mean you can use it. <laughs> oh yeah. I could have a really good set of kitchen knives and I wouldn't be able to cook shit. <laughs> have, have, have you experienced that before? Like where yes. you've been with a guy who, yes. and you're like, this should be great. And then you're like, yes. okay. You've I'm never- like, well, I'm just going to sit on your face because <laughs> yeah. this isn't working for me. Yes. Yes. Just because you have a pretty cock doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You've always got away with words, Dad. <laughs> I remember the last time we had you on, <laughs> some of the one line I was like, this is going in the history of podcasting. <laughs> it was something like, um, you called OnlyFans Uber for my pussy. Yeah. And, yeah. And then. Sounds, sounds like something I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I I personally love that guys send me dick pics, especially on my OnlyFans, because I love giving dick ratings. Oh, that's a real huge thing, man. Oh, huge. my God. Especially huge. if it's femdom. Like, let me fucking yeah. roast your cock. Like, that's the best day ever. Yeah. So. What, what is that? How do they react when you do that? I'm really mean. Okay. <laughs> Give me a picture of your dick. I'll roast it right now. <laughs> but, they, but they ask for it. It's not, she's not mean to a no, guy. Just, no, 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 no. They're, like, they're like, oh, humiliate my, no. She's like, oh, oh yeah. I'm going I've in on shooting, this. You know? uh, since I've seen you, I've been shooting a lot more femdom stuff. Okay. Um, just because I've been like enjoying it. And yeah, my femdom content is my favorite. <laughs> wow. And these guys are like craving the, the nastiest. Can you tell me, just mm-hmm. like, for example, like if you don't mind dipping into the archives of your mind, <laughs> what is the sort of things that you, you may say to these guys about their penises? <laughs> For free? Is that, is that hard? Okay, why don't you send me a photo when you get fully hard? Oh, is... Oh, is that how you would stroke it? Are you just like over eager? You can settle down. You can slow it down. You don't have to be such a fucking loser. If, oh, do you last more than 30 seconds in bed? Are you going to last this even minute now? Oh, you're going to come already, aren't you? You're fucking pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. For free? <laughs> 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 uh, that'll that'll be that'll be three hundred dollars. Okay. That being said, like it's only with finish. consent. I care about consent. So yeah, yeah but so, but yeah, uh, all the ratings. Uh, femdom stuff. No, or, no, no, no. Just some like of them a, just want the eagles. probably like twenty five percent, thirty percent. But what about the ones who think that they're bigger and want to hear that, and then you're like, actually, it's a five out of ten, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I like. Um, I have some friends that we talk about. Like, okay, but what's the real rating? <laughs> you gave them an eight, but what's the real rating? Oh, really? <laughs> but all no, the but ratings are accurate. No, they really are. My favorite is femdom <laughs> and small penis humiliation. Guys will send me their tiny micro cocks, and they want me to roast them. And it is the best days ever. It's so much fun. Bro, God bless them. This is why we keep getting you guys. <laughs> God bless them. You know? It's like these like little tight. Ty- yeah. Oh, it's the best. It's How the best. small are we talking about? Oh. Give me an example. Yeah. Like, can, can, like guys, you know, like, like guys will jerk off with two fingers. Right. Yeah. Fully and hard. They, and to come. Because they couldn't get it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's awful. My oh. favorite. And then I usually like, he's having coffee and I'm like, look at this guy's tiny cock. And he's yeah, like, like oh my God, God, go inside. <laughs> 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 And that's uh, breakfast. Yeah, that's breakfast. Wow. Yeah. Like jump scare. I, I just yeah. woke up, babe. Could you give me a... Yeah, give me a break. Yeah, and like, were you aware that men with this smaller penis existed before you got into this sort of thing? Or was this your first experience with a lot of little I mean, penises? anytime you date a guy, you're like, please don't have a terrible cock. Just please, just please let it just look like somewhat decent. Mm. It's like this. I'm sure it's the same for men. I'll tell you too. And it's like these guys, they'll send, they'll send their dicks in for rating. And there's a, there's a part to it that you're like, I kind of get it. Mm. They're probably, they're just looking for some validation in life. And it, it, it it's funny because. The most of the time they actually want to hear what I would do with it yeah. more. Like when I get to a dick rating, it's not like, oh, I might be like, oh, your cock is so thick or, oh, you look like you're like a solid like seven, eight inches like that, you know, but it's more like I would like to ride it like this. I would like to see how far I can put it down my throat. I would like to like see how quickly I can get you off just for sport, you know, just like stuff like that. They care more about like the dirty talk aspect, I mm. feel like, at least for my fans. I can't speak yeah. on everyone, but um, I think they enjoy more of like what I would do with that cock more than like. Me being like, yeah, that will look really good with like a little top hat and a mustache. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard I've heard porn stars talk about like having sex with the bigger sticks. Can you describe a bit of like 
having to deal with those extra large guys and how tricky that can be or whatever. <laughs> If you don't mind, Vic. Yeah. No, no, no. I know I know where this is going. Did I tell you about the last stick I ever took when I was on last nope. time? No. Nope. Okay. He's British. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you know who Danny D is? I've heard of him, yeah. Okay. So Danny D is this like sweet as pea, nice guy, English guy. So small. Like I could take him in a fight. Like, he's not a big dude. No, man. He's 118 he's, pounds. Yeah, he could be a jockey. Such an, yeah. <laughs> this but really had, sums up the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh oh, away. Absolutely. Like he got a lot in one area absolutely. and the rest not this so much. This guy has this massive dick. And Brazzers was like, I'm going to get, like, my bra- thanks, Brazzers. The scene's just going to shoot, yeah. Huh. Um, but they were like, will you work with Danny D? And I was like, I love him. He's a really nice guy, but he has a huge dick. And I am, like, I am not the kind of person that's like, what's the biggest thing you can put inside me? You know, so. You know how many inches he is? I uh, guesstimate. <laughs> He's, he's, he's around too. He's like he's uh, he's like a subway sandwich. Wow. Okay. <laughs> he's a foot. Yeah. He's a foot long. Yeah, Next time you get a you're gonna be like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> she did what? <laughs> yeah. Um. I remember like going to set. I flew to Vegas to work with him. I was thinking about getting out, like stopping working with performers. I was like, you know, I just kind of feel like. I'm, I've done everything I wanted to do and I've worked with everyone I wanted to work with. And like, I just kind of feel like I'm ready for this new chapter. And I working with Danny, I was like, dude, you have a huge dick. Like I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, and he was really sweet. He's like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll lay however you want. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to need like a solid 20 minutes before the scene starts to like work my pussy up to like get it in. And he was super cool. All right. What, no problem. Can you tell me what that means? You have to like do like pregnancy breathing. <laughs> Because you can't just start the scene and be like, I think a lot of people think that like, just we just are just giant. like open gates. Like, yes, just give me all the cock. No, like, I'm just ready to go. I thought these women must be doing something. No, we warm up before. Yeah. I mean, everyone's different. I warm up. If it's a big dick, I like to warm up before. I like to get my pussy wet. Like, I like to like. St- stretching before the marathon. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like inching it in and like sitting on his cock. I'm like, okay, okay, I can do this. I can do this. How I, painful is that to start it, with? It actually wasn't painful because I slowly warmed up to it and so the scene started we did a great scene he was very sweet he was very like gentle and I will never forget it as long as I live I'm walking through the airport because I was flying back home to LA from Vegas and my fucking pussy was giving me like a standing ovation I was walking through the airport my pussy was going like this because he had fucking blown it out for the last two hours and I was like I'm done (laughs) And that's wow. it. I climbed the Mount Everest of cock and I'm fucking done with it. And um, my pussy still doesn't do that, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. But uh, yeah, I was just kind of like, I did. Where do you go from here? A freight train? Like, what else am I going to put in there? Yeah. So, like, there can't be that many guys as big or bigger than him. Right? Yeah. And like I said, like, I, I know a lot of girls that love that. It's just not for me. So I was like, you know, I did it. It's on the Internet. Here you go. So, like, <laughs> enjoy. And yeah. So that's not your ideal. Is there an ideal? Obviously, Vic, uh, present company. Yeah. yeah, I just like a nice cock that like stretches me to a nice point, makes me come, and I love a man that needs pussy. There we I'm go. Easy to please. <laughs> Very simple. You must have a degree in that. <laughs> yeah, at this point, yeah. Did you give him instructions though? Like, as in, like, you know, when you're getting to know each other, were you very communicative of what you wanted from him or was it? Oh. Yeah, we actually talked about it. Yeah, we did. I yeah, literally, yeah. I was like, dude, I hope you eat pussy and ass because if you don't, we're going to have a problem right out of the gate. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I was like, oh, I got an oral fixation. So we're good. We got this. We got this. <laughs> yeah. Just a funny, oral fix. F- funny story was, is we started dating long distance. So we mm. spent all this time talking to each other. So we had like two or three weeks and it wound up being this weird thing where I met her family and she met my family. And we it was didn't like plan 19- it like that. It was like 1948, like we met the families and we still hadn't had sex. So the first- It was just like ah, these like freak yeah. circumstances. It was just first circumstances. So that, we're like, it's building, it's building, it's oh building. So God. like the first night we have sex, I'm like, you know, I'm a 50 year old man and she's an adult film star. And we were like 16 year old kids on we a were freaking like, first date. Like heavy We were petting. like trying to figure out how to get, and it was, and while, I mean, it was amazing. It was, it was wonderful, but it was hysterical because we're like, how are we like so nervous? How is so We had been possible? friends for a year and a half. You had met, I had, you, I had met your family. You had met my family. We had yeah. been like talking and sexting and like discussing like what yeah. we like in bed. And then you like get into the room together alone. You're like, oh God, I hope this works. Oh, you know, talk like, about oh, pressure. Oh, there is a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah, a lot like, of pressure. 
realize, like, you know, like I think we both realize this might be it. This might be the one. And it's like the first time, man, you don't want to, you don't want to make a bad repression. So it's Especially like, yeah. when you're the dude, obviously there's a little more pressure yeah. on us generally, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How yeah. do you cope? You all right, big boy? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's doing okay. I've been okay, six, six years. Six, 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 six years next week. Flying so, colors, I think. <laughs> but it was, it was, and we, we always joke about it because we laugh because we really were nervous. We were like really kind of like giddy nervous going into it. And it's like, how could this be possible? And then, like, I, and then like for me, it's like our first time. I was you know? like, ooh, do I give him the porn star experience or yeah. do I give him the Kira experience? And what is the difference between the two? When you're shooting porn, it's, it's, I'm still fucking and enjoying it, but you're, you're playing it up for the camera. You know, it's like, you know, or it's like when you're, when you're intimate, you know, I'm not like, oh my God, fuck me. Like, you just don't do that really. Like out of the gate, maybe, in the, maybe right before an orgasm, but like right out of the gate, not so much. So... I think a woman who can perform a little bit in bed, uh, like if they've got that confidence, and yeah. I don't mean like all the way to porn level, but just k- turn the volume. I'm up. a loud person in real life, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. don't. Yeah, it's it, it's you're, authentic. It's, yeah, women authentic. with confidence are yeah. fucking fantastic. Oh, yeah, I just that's got, the hottest thing like, on the planet. When, when a so woman is hot. like knows you, they're confident with you. That's when you're like, okay we good you know yeah. like because yeah. as men it, when you feel like you've got to make all the moves and do all of the like and do you feel like it's confidence or do you feel like vocal because i feel like a lot of women just won't communicate what they want and i feel like a lot of people are like oh you're a confident woman like no i just told you that i want you to bend me over and fuck me like that's just like me communicating i guess for <laughs> me some women don't have the confidence to communicate that's true. That's true. and it's it's difficult like it doesn't feel great <laughs> when I, I, I it's, you're it, like woman, guessing right yeah, she, yeah. it's not even that it's like she could be beautiful she could be everything you want but if you're not telling me you're in this moment with me oh, then I'm just saying. like eh. I get what you're saying. There's a disconnect. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Put it down to shyness sometimes. Like they just don't feel like they can be that that girl. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, I've definitely brought it out. (laughs) I just got to say that. Because I do shower them with praise. (laughs) That's all we we want. We just want to be told we're pretty that we fuck great. Tell a girl she has a pretty pussy and she'll do anything. Because girls, I have never yeah. met a woman that was not insecure about her pussy. Yeah. If you, if a girl opens her Very legs true. and go, damn, you have a really pretty pussy. That's it. I guarantee she'll suck your cock. Guaranteed. Free, free <laughs> advice, Ben. Free, free advice. There it's you go. great advice. Yeah, it's great advice. Well, because some men don't think to say things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and Again. it's not even that they're not thinking it. Mm-hmm. They just don't want to say it because it's like, oh, what if I'm like, a creepy weirdo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and again, that's, that's the, that's the big problem, right? Women want to be told things. They are emotional and men mm-hmm. are visual. Men are looking at it in their eyes, but it's like, say, say, use your words, bro. Mm-hmm. Use your words. Yes. Say something like, oh my that's God. So you know, true. And guys don't, we just even don't just think like, like that. If, you, if like, not to get too graphic on your show, but like, Go even if it. like, <laughs> 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 even if like, if you're getting head, and she's doing something that you enjoy, fucking tell her. <laughs> because for us, it's like, oh, I love when you play with my balls. Great, because I'm guessing down here. Like, <laughs> so true. I'm pulling and prodding and stroking and hoping that you like it. Mm-hmm. But if you say like, I love that, or I love the way your pussy feels, or I love the way you feel in this position, or I like when you do this. Like for us, we lo- I'm sure guys appreciate it too. Yeah. It's like, I'm it doing a good help. job. It does help. <laughs> like, I think okay, that's cool. the biggest advantage mm-hmm. that I've got in life as being a talker and I've definitely used that in every avenue of my life. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? It does help for sure. I was wondering if you, either of you, this is, worry about your appearance, generally speaking. Um, Do you think either of you is more concerned with how you come across in public or... Are you talking about like appearance like looks? Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. And uh, I guess there's quite a bit of pressure on you because that's kind of your part of your job. And I know you do a lot of photo shoots. Mm -hmm. So it kind of must be in your head a little bit. Yeah, um, I am obviously, I just turned 34 and I got into porn when I was 21. So obviously like when you, when you're over 30, you start to age and I'm not a big... Botox filler person. I don't know what the future holds, but in this moment in time, I'm not. So I also, it's like, I look in the mirror and I, I've watched myself age in 4K <laughs> for fucking Bro, I know how years. bad that is. You know. So as I check these edits, I'm like, fucking hell. Yeah, and, like, I, and I was trying to explain this actually to a girlfriend of mine the other day. I'm like, women take pictures of themselves and put it on the internet. And it's like, just your face, really. Oh, okay, I'm going to wear a little, like, waist snatcher or whatever. So I look... 
my f- I'm bent over a table and you can see like my rolls and I'm like, God, OK, well, that's on the fucking Internet forever. So it, I, I do struggle a little bit. Like I wouldn't say unhealthily, but no, not unhealthily. Either, no. Like I'm like, damn, I got to start working out no, more. You, you, you know, the thing that I was sort <laughs> you, of thinking about was when I met. Well, when I first it was introduced to your content, mm-hmm. you had the I don't know how to put this, but in the UK, we'd probably say the girl next door look mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. familiar, a mm-hmm. little bit out of reach, but possible, but, 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 possible. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, we feel like we've known her before, like we've seen, <laughs> you know, and it was, it was a, a, a niche that you owned mm-hmm. very much so. And obviously you were so young and to be expected. And as much as you've maintained, you look very well. It's ho- hard for a woman, I think, to be dealing with that level of scrutiny all the time. And it's, it's really tough. And I've noticed even my content change changing. I went from like girl next door to now like naughty housewife. And mm. like, like I was saying, like doing more femdom stuff. Like I'm more like womanly. Yeah. I still have a big ass. And stuff. But it is, it's like, okay, like I'm like more body conscious, like just from age, like you, you as a woman, if you're naked all the time on the internet, it's, it's hard to see some, some days I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have eaten that pasta last night. That doesn't look so good. Uh, but then, <laughs> you know what, like guys don't even care. They're just like, just show us your ass dude, and bend over and jiggle it. If, like, if you're known for a big ass, we want you to eat more. <laughs> I, like, I'm yeah, saying, every, I know. I actually, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm cooking pasta every yeah, weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. noticed my fans like it more when yeah. I'm thick. So, and yeah. like me, like being like a woman over 30, I'm like, ah. That's, that's, you know? always, that's always my comedy with her. She's like, there was stuff on the end table. I'm like, if they're looking at the end oh, table. Oh, I know. <laughs> you, you're doing the content wrong, hon. No, <laughs> like, just mean. in case you're it's like, it's like, she's like, oh my God. And I'm like, there's a pillow in the scene? I'm already talking about it. I was like, my like, stocking's ripped. He goes, no one's looking at no that. No one's here. No one It cares. reminds me of like nearly every relationship I've been in, the woman puts on a stone within a month of being with me. Because I'm like, what's that? I've, oh, that's the weight thing, right? Yeah, yeah. We, a stone is like, we'll use anything. Sorry, like 14 pounds. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, 12, yeah. 14 pounds. I, I'm, I'm always like, yeah, have some more. Because I like women's thick, you know mm-hmm. what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I, I, me too, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, I've definitely thickened up. Mm. I would say that from when, when I was 21, I was like very small. You know, it's funny but, you say that because because I'm I'm conscious of how I appear mm. for her, not because I give a shit, but I want to. I literally want to be like, especially because I'm the porn star's husband. So not only looks, but attitude. You have to kind of like develop a certain persona when guys come up, and it's like you know, I I, I almost it's like you have to kind of be disarming a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. they, they're fans. You know, they pay the bills. They're fans. And you look and, kind and of you, scary. I, like Vic kind of looks scary. He's a little intimidating. No, I, feel I, like. I, I swear to God, Vic has like a little bit of a mob boss type <laughs> yeah. look to him. <laughs> I but, get that a lot. I like when he that opens he looks... his mouth, you're like, oh my god, this is nicest guy ever. <laughs> yeah. Like it doesn't a little bit like me apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. You're totally different to how you look. If I saw you on the street, I would like cross the street. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, ooh, like, that guy's gonna kill me. <laughs> I, was, I was telling one of you guys we talked to. I said, because like, Brian is great. I said he's the guy you want in a bar to go. That's my friend. Yeah. yeah. I said, Meanwhile, he's like the nicest guy I've ever met in my oh, life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There was a viral clip of me jumping into a fight, uh, for, uh, and my mate was about to get attacked, and I'm like, just straight in the middle of these yeah. guys, like, all right, what the fuck is going on? Oh, yeah. So you're actually God. bang on about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. There's been quite a few porn stars who've came out in the last few years who are mega names like uh, I wrote them down Mia Khalifa mm-hmm. Lana Rhodes mm-hmm. uh, Adriana Chechek mm-hmm. they've all been saying like how bad it was and how they I regret know. it I and... get so fucking pissed off yeah. when people... well Kieran Kieran kind of was like they weren't saying that when they were on set getting it, paid yeah. yes, that's I mean, why I Kieran and I are friends I'm not, like, I'm not so sure pissed. about Chechek because I've seen her and I, don't, I haven't seen her really trash the industry but the other two um, are nightmares mm-hmm. so there's a there's a tweet from her because um, she kind of put this out saying what if I told you that I hated that I did porn what if I told you that I hated my body is not my own I'm tired of being a product uh, I'm not my own person it's really killing me I don't want to tell my truth because you'll use them against me and then she it went it sounds like she was just on her period maybe or you know honestly or she might have had imposter syndrome where you know and, and we, we've had this conversation before and, and I know my wife has illustrated that maybe you shouldn't get in until you're 21, 22 yeah. that there's that point in time and a lot of times they get in and you, your frontal lobe isn't fully developed. You, you Maybe you make decisions you might not have made later yeah. on and you regret the decisions. But don't turn around and say it was the industry's fault. 
Uh, I get you know, really pissed off when I see those stories because... Well, well Mia and Lana were mega stories. Like yeah. They, yeah, they and, did quite a lot of damage with those yeah, because they are the most the, famous. You set the industry back 10 years, 20 mm. years because you made bad choices and people talked you into things and now you're bitter about it. Or, it it's like I had such a great experience in porn. I loved it. I still love it. I, had, I loved everyone I shot with. I never felt trapped. I never felt tricked into anything, but I had the balls to say it. I had the balls to say, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to work with that person. No, I don't. But people are like, okay, well, maybe I'll do this. And okay, well, maybe I'll do that. And oh, I'll do, you know, I'll do it for the money or I'll take the check and get a new Louis bag. And then they turn around 10 years later and they're like, I hate my life. I hate my life choices. I hate what I did on the internet. Well, maybe if you had fucking checked in with yourself every two seconds and made sure it's something you actually wanted to do, you wouldn't have been in this shit situation. So don't turn around and then blame the porn industry for something because you made bad choices in life. Accountability is a big deal. I get deal. pissed. Yeah. You say, like, Rah. Everything is somebody. It's their mother's fault, their father's fault, their cousin's fault, their job's fault. And it's who's working for No, it's all your so it's fault. So it's also like- <laughs> They're all victims of circumstance. Yeah. 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 Everybody's a victim. Porn is such an easy jab. It's the same thing. Like, oh, well, she's just a fucking slut. It's just an easy, oh, well, porn was so bad to me. It's like, no, it wasn't. It's not. Well, the modest thing about it's it is great. I love it. I can't say you, enough nice things in the industry. Did you see I, Lana Rhodes or Mia Khalifa using their real names? Oh, they, they, they're still riding off the name, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the ironic. How thing horrible is. was it then? But, or, <laughs> and it's also like, okay, do you just need another press story? Yeah. Are you just sit, talking shit so that you get press? It, it, and meanwhile, all of us that are still in the industry and loving it and working hard and have nothing but success stories and happy memories. Now everyone looks at us, looks down at us because you made bad choices or you want to be in you, some you, ar you, news article. You feed into the crazy extremists who want to like put a put a taboo on it like it's 1970 mm -hmm. and somebody just got off the bus from Ovahar and they loaded them up with drugs and they sent them out to do porn. I mean, this is not, the, you know, these the, those are long ago days. This is a corporate, it's business. And uh, my wife has said repeatedly, when you do porn, it's, it's, it's a life sentence, period. There's no thing. If she cured cancer tomorrow, it would be porn star cures cancer or ex-porn star cures cancer. The problem is, is some people don't want that anymore. Yeah. So they, they want to switch it off. They want to switch yeah. it off and they want to figure out how to get out of it. And the only way to figure out how to get out of it is go, they victimized me. Yes. I didn't want to do this. It wasn't really me. I only did it for six months, even though I you were out there for you, four years. It's like, come I on. Can't, I can't speak about Lana and Mia because I don't know them, but I can't tell you how many people that I know that don't even read contracts, that yeah. don't pay, read the script before they get to set, that don't do the homework on the male talent or the female talent, and then they wonder why they get in the situation. It's like you agree to things without even doing any research, and then it's like, oh, well, I'm mad because, you know, I did a scene and I was wearing braces. And it's like, say no! No one is forcing you. Nobody has you chained to a wall. Mm. You are making every decision in porn. You, are, you have the ability at any moment in time to say no, and you choose not to. And it feels like specifically with those two girls, they have made some of the most money in history from porn. From porn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, let's not kid with you. Without porn, you guys would be fucking nobodies, right? You wouldn't be doing anything. And it, it's helped you have a beautiful life. But I feel like it's a case of wanting your cake and eat it. Like, yeah. you, Absolutely. You, you want to be in a situation where you have millions and millions of pounds. I mean, I know these women are like so rich from porn. Are they? Um, well, Lorna was, from what I understood. I How don't, do you know? Have you seen her bank account? Uh, I, there's, I, a lot, there's a lot of bullshit. I, I, well, I might be wrong, but I knew, um, I knew a guy who dated her mm -hmm. and he was driving around a Lamborghini with her that she just bought a Lamborghini and he was like this girl's got a lot of money so let's just say for the case of what for the she, sake of argue, yeah. for what she's trying to put yeah. across you got a beautiful life out of it well you, everything comes with consequences mm -hmm. so you you can't make that decision to do this to get all of that and then complain about what comes with it when you let's not let's not act like people who get into porn aren't away yeah. it's not like a big surprise like oh my god people judge me like yeah that's why it pays so well I, think, exactly. I, think, I literally think one of the two of them actually said when I got into porn I didn't realize I was going to have to have sex oh god I literally I, I swear to you I read that and I'm and I'm looking at the I was like are you, are you seriously yeah it's hard because I try not to uh, if you look at my social media, I really try not to get into any like political debates, industry debate. I really st try to stay out of it. But in those situations, it's hard to watch that, especially when you're when I'm so proud of doing porn, like being part of the porn industry. Mm. So to hear someone just bash it based upon bad decisions, you're just like, are you kidding me? Are you like 
you're gonna you you're gonna switch sides, but yet you still go by your stage name. Mm-hmm. You still have an OnlyFans. You're mm-hmm. still taking checks. You're still getting checks from Paul and Hope. Yeah. So is it Pornhub. really that bad, mm-hmm. or are you just bitter about it? Did you did you wipe? Did you did you call Pornhub and say take all my content out? Because <laughs> they would if they you told them not to take them. Did you do you still on OnlyFans? Are you still using the name? Are you still profiting off the name? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It's a shame. You know, it's, it's a shame. If because it was every that time, horrible, change your name. And it doesn't matter who, anytime these stories come out and girls, you know, use them for attention. It's just, it's it's sad. It's really sad. And, you know, I'm not, am I saying the industry is perfect? No. Of course, there's a small amount of things that could happen or, you know, small circumstances. I'm not going to sit here and say it's all like rainbows and fucking butterflies everywhere, but you have to have a good strong head about it. You have to be smart. You have to do the research. You have to make sure that you what choices you make in life set you up for your future. Don't just agree to everything, make bad choices and then bl- look for somebody else to blame. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the, when the, I get pissed. The, having done PR for a long time, I've done PR for just about every form of entertainment you could possibly imagine, literally from priests to, to, uh, to politicians. Mm-hmm. In every form of entertainment, there's a seedy side, every single one. OK. It, and, you know, it's like they always talk about, oh, my God, suicide's important. Yeah. How much we want to run through the list of musicians who have committed suicide and, you know, even WWE over, wrestlers. Yeah, WWE yeah. wrestlers. Yeah, it's oh, everywhere. Oh, and, and a lot of times it's consequences of choices. You, you made a choice. You made a consequential choice. You went out there. You did something. And then you want to regret it and blame it. And the worst part about it is, is what you're doing isn't just trying to defend yourself. You're screwing a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're literally you're screwing, hurting, a lot, you're, you're of hurting people. a lot of people. You're hurting their ability to earn a living. You're hurting their employees. You're hurting a lot or of people. Or even like, you know, like the mainstream people that go on OnlyFans and like scam fans. That hurts us. The people that don't scam fans. When you say scam, how do you mean? I can't think of the girl's name. It's, uh, but she wasn't in porn. She was... Um, I think she's just like a, main, a mainstream, a mainstream. It was a former Disney star, not Maitland Ward, who's who's a sweetheart. But I don't she know. went out and she charged like a thousand dollars, and you know, it was like, like a she couple got, years ago. Yeah, she got a whole. The OnlyFans had to change the policies because of it. she got a whole bunch of money and then didn't deliver anything that she promised. Mm. Like Meanwhile, she was, now know, people are afraid to use then, OnlyFans because they're afraid that we're going to scam them. Yep. You know, so it's like your consequences also affect the people around you. So. I think one of the hardest things that I've become aware of after interviewing uh, people like yourself and Kieran, Kieran said something really deep, which was like, people treat him like he is a danger to children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, and that yes. really was kind of hard to, because yeah. you, know, you know Kieran, like he's, he's, he's a nice yeah, guy. Yeah, that actually gives me chills because he's like the nicest Sweetest guy. guy. Yeah, he told me this sad story about how, obviously he's a big football fan, mm-hmm. but yeah, he got this kid who I, I want to say was in a really bad health situation. Mm-hmm. He got this kid football tickets. Aww. And he he got great tickets because he's friends with the club, yada, yada, yada. And um, the I think the family who of the kid were mm-hmm. like, we don't want people knowing it was you mm-hmm. who got our sick little boy football tickets right, because did, of what you're associated with. You did the right thing. Yeah. And I'm not saying, I, yeah. Uh, it's. Do you Have you experienced anything where you're like, I'm being treated as if I'm, a really bad person, yeah. Yeah, personally, I don't even, I don't even associate, I don't have any kids. I don't want kids. Um, mm. I will personally say, I've actually had, you know, friends that have had kids that I have had to say, I can't go to this event or I can't, because I don't feel like it would be appropriate because someone's going to see who I am and assume Oh, the, the oh yeah, the porn star is here. There's a porn star over there. That's inappropriate. It's like meanwhile I'm in like this, mm-hmm. sitting there, just like not by minding my own business. I'm like, you only know I'm a porn star because you watch my scenes, but that's another conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. How so, do you know? I yeah, I get a lot of I get a lot of like just blind judgment for it. Um, and it's you know it's you just have to take it like if you're gonna judge me without knowing me, that I'm not gonna change your mind no matter what I say. So I would just hope that you would get to know me as a person before you just like judge me for my like, career choices. And it, I feel fortunate because I have a job that I love. Like how many people get to do something that they genuinely love mm. and are you know financially successful from it? So that's the thing that surprised me about you is it wasn't really about the money in the way. <laughs> it was about no, the pussy. <laughs> no, but but like you say this and like when I first heard it, I was like, yeah, sure. But the more <laughs> I've gotten to know you and the more I've seen, I've done so much research on you after two interviews and watching you two guys together, I'm like, yeah, she doesn't really have to do this anymore. <laughs> like, I don't think you actually need to do it anymore. No, I really. just enjoy it. Yeah. I just am still enjoying it. Because so. you've got businesses going left, yeah. right and center. And that, that's always been my, that's, that's always my problem with the people who come out. It's like, there are ways to do it. 
it. Obviously, we are a living example. There are ways to do it where you can take your name, start businesses, mm-hmm. phase out of the industry, do the right thing, and not screw everybody. Yeah. Figuratively, <laughs> not literally. Figuratively screw everybody who literally worked with you and helped you out and maybe helped your career, helped you build your name, and then you go out the door and punch them in the head on your way out the door. I don't care how much you trash talk the industry. It's not going to go away. Yeah. Oh. And no one's going to accept you. Yeah, if you've, you've, if if you've you... ever been to Pompeii, they, I mean, there's like yeah. on the wall. Well, not, like, well, not even like, that. Like, I think people, you know, maybe some people think that if they leave the industry and they trash it, that it'll get erased from their, yeah, from their history. Yeah. It's not yeah. going away. I mean, listen, if anything, you, everyone can be a porn star now. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, literally. It's a bit like being well, a celebrity. That's, yeah. that's the other problem, I feel like, especially with OnlyFans, is I feel like a lot of people assume that if I make an OnlyFans, I'm going to make millions of dollars. And it oh, doesn't work like that. that. Oh, yeah. They think that. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, and, and, like, that's the other thing is, like, I, I, I want to communicate, like, okay, you're making a life choice. You might not make millions of dollars. So is it worth it to you to deal with all this bullshit and all this like, you know, blind judgment and all, you know, have yourself on the Internet forever? Is it going to be worth it for you if you only make a couple thousand? Mm. Yeah, the funny is this going to be something is, you enjoy? or Because if you're doing it for the money, it's not the right choice. Yeah, you, know, you, you really it, it, the bizarre part, too, is everybody thinks that. I'm attractive, male or female, going to drop my clothing, do 20 minutes of work and make a billion dollars. If they took two days to watch what my wife has to do every day, not just, you know, the 20 minutes of shooting. She's got alarms on her phone when she has to post. She engages with fans. She's got to upload. You got to edit content. You have, then we have all the other businesses that we do. All of that stuff. It's, we work constantly to maintain this not working, looking lifestyle. And <laughs> and these guys don't grasp that. You're not just going to drop your clothes and make money. Yeah. You better bust your ass. You better work hard. You have to uh, still, everything still requires hard work. Everything requires hard work and no one has patience anymore. Mm-hmm. We live in an instant gratification. And that's, she always laughs. She goes, you are the most patient person I know. It's like when we wanted to create the underwear that we, we sent to you guys, it took us two years to do that. Very good underwear, by the way. Yeah, thank, oh, thank you. you. <laughs> but it took us two years to do that. And my wife went nuts making sure that the band was perfect and it fit. I love the, the pro- band. It's, yeah. It says, <laughs> yeah. What does it say? It said remove to fuck. Yeah. 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 But it's We're, like quality stuff. Yeah. It it's is, high yeah. quality you, stuff. Well. And she wanted it to be that way. Most yeah. people three weeks in would have dumped it. The, the, the content game, whatever kind of content you're creating, mm. it's a lot harder than people understand oh. for sure. It's whatever goes on off camera a lot yeah. of time is the hard bit. And I remember I, I spoke to a cam girl once who explained to me like, I am up at night for hours and hours talking to these guys when they're coming in from a nightclub night and I'm trying to keep going and mm-hmm. grinding. And she was like, I am exhausted. Yeah. I sleep the day away. I get up, have a coffee and I'm back on the internet yeah. all night. And that really hit me. I was like, fuck, that sounds hard. And you're yeah. talking to guys who are drunk. Like, yeah. you know, they're asking. And she said like, they'd ask her for like, this freaked me out actually. Cause she was like, they wanted them asked her for like, inappropriate pictures of her when she was younger. Oh, those yeah. are the ones that are yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's some, there's a little bit of like, a, there, not a little, there's a lot of mental with it too because you have to deal with that. I've had, I've gotten like, people show up to my house, death threats, stalkers, weird questions like You're that. You're rattling this off way too quickly with it. Uh, <laughs> people show up to you. Oh. Yeah, we had, we had, we had a stalker outside our house in Manhattan for almost three weeks and it was mm. a woman. It was actually a woman. We we've, yeah. we've had but with the whole what, gun. What, what, what all, kind of woman was this, and why was she there? Uh, we we think did she was, communicate? No, we 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 had to call the cops, and we had to get them. Most of this stuff stems from like a lot of those romance scams and Ghana scam stuff. Oh, um, but, can, can we can we explain that? Because I know we touched on it last time, but for those who don't know, you have so many millions of followers who. And there's a lot of them who want to contact you. Mm-hmm. And there's people who are preying on them, pretending mm-hmm. to be you, yes. to get money out of them. Is yeah. that correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. And is there any more information? That, like, it's actually gotten worse because yeah. um, Instagram now, because of the verification, what people are doing is getting a, an account verified with whatever their ID is and their, whatever the face is. And then they switch it to my name and my face. But they stay verified. Right. And then they go in as a verified account and they're pretending to talk to my fans like, oh, this is my super secret personal account. Um, You know, I'm you know, make some bullshit, bullshit, bullshit story, whether it's like I'm leaving Vic or I want to be with you or I'll fly out and fuck you or you just send me all this money and then this all your magical dreams will come true. I, and, I, I guarantee you at some point in one of your comments, it's going to say that's an old interview. They're not really together anymore. 
Oscar Wilde said it's easier to fool somebody than convince them they've been fooled. Mm. And that is the, the most accurate quote I've ever heard in my entire life. Because one, once people start paying into this, there's a, there's a feeling inside like it can't be fake because then I've been screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I have had, to believe. And they had, keep sinking more money into it. I and just I'm had someone message me said they thought they were with me for the last six years. Six years. Never met her. Face to face. Six years. You've got problems, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but like... But I mean, you you want to be scammed. No, no, they, like, yeah, yeah. Th- there's no sympathy. Yeah. No, like, we've had six Christmases. I've not seen you yet. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. <laughs> I've not seen you at all. <laughs> no, I've been. Six birthdays, six... I mean, this you know... This is wild. But, but yeah. even if it's... It, How it, much it, money are we talking about? By millions. Millions, millions and guy millions. I have one I've found out about that lost $150,000. And you said in total it's like millions. millions. Oh, millions. Millions and millions and millions, millions of dollars. Millions a yeah. year. And that's... Easy. And millions a year, and that's just her. That's not including, like... Elsa Jean, who's also, and there's many other people in the industry. It, it's, they can find, you know, obviously nude photos of these girls online. Mm-hmm. So you can create an intimate relationship. Most of the people that they're going after are not. I look very girl next door. Very girl next door. Like you were saying earlier. When they, so it's, I have an unlimited amount of nude content, photos, mm-hmm. videos um, that you can use to pretend to have a relationship. Jesus, when you put it like that. Especially yeah. now that I'm shooting at home and I'm on my couch and I'm yeah. in my bed and I'm not, I mean, you know. Because if the guy goes, send me a picture of you drinking coffee, we can find well, that. Yeah, yeah, easy, but yeah. but no, send I mean, me some nudes. Even better. Some, yeah. yeah, and and if I get one, I get 20 emails a week going, you know you're not really with her. Uh, you stolen all her money. You better get it back or I'm going to call the police. And I'm usually writing back going, please, please call the police. Please, please, please get them involved, please. But I mean, it's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. It, it. It's gotten crazy. A, we, we had a, policemen show up at our door and said this true story i'm out back like doing something and the person knocks on the door and they're like hi i have the miami police department on the phone we need to talk to you about your daughter and so i freaked out she she that they met my daughter daughter. daughter. my real daughter yeah and she was like oh my god her her daughter went to miami Miami. she got a car accident something horrible the guy wanted to know about her three-year-old daughter well we don't have any kids your three-year-old daughter's in danger. This is a police officer. This is a police officer. We're like, you're in a the detective. States. Detect. <laughs> you know, help us out here, bro. I, like, I don't have any kids. Oh, well, we got this uh, this call. I'm like, what? you didn't think to like Why do your little laptop somebody, for five uh, seconds exactly. and figure out that I don't have any kids? Why would somebody do that? Well, are you sitting? Because we're going to tell you the story. And you can see the poor police officer in our town is like going, oh, I'm so sorry. Like he's looking at us like it's great. But that's, I mean, we've dealt with this over and over. And, and she said repeatedly, she goes, of all of the things that I expected in porn. This was not it. This was the, the this one. is by far the most difficult thing in porn that I was not prepared for. And our biggest issue is we can't get any help now we've we've contacted and talked to like the fbi and stuff they're almost powerless because it's overseas they can't really do anything but we can't get the social media platforms to take the fake accounts down yet they'll they'll knock her account down every six months well because of the content yeah but you've seen her content my page this it's it's well censored yeah yeah, Yeah. i do pretty i do a pretty like vanilla yeah however the fake pages will put up the wildest shit. They'll find the old scenes and put it up and we can't get them to take the accounts down. Even though she's a verified account, we can't get them to take the accounts down. We're like, well, there's no privacy aspect when you join a social media platform. It would literally take them two seconds. They can probably write an AI script that looks into the DMs and sees them asking for money from people and just wipe the account. That's all you have to do. Just wipe the account out. Nope. Not a damn thing. Not help at all. And it screws a lot of people. There are a lot of people losing a lot of money. And then and we have the to be thing. worried. I feel bad. I feel bad. Like, I get it. It's a, it's funny. It's like, oh, they're an idiot. They shouldn't have for it. But there are people that just spend a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there. Maybe they think they're getting, you know, a scene of mine. Maybe they think they're, I don't know, paying for me to go out and suck their dick, whatever bullshit, that, that lie they sold. But it's like, it's. I feel bad. It's like, you fall for these yeah. scams and I'm trying to help, but I, I, I'm like... I've seen you post repeatedly about yeah, this I and try. you, you've tried to put the word out, but it's like... It's just, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it's a, and I know a lot of times she gets really upset because they are using her image to take money from people who mm. can't afford to lose the money. Mm. And it, and it stings a bit. And you know, you got to get a, you get a little thick skinned about it because we're like, we have tried. I can't even tell you like every podcast we start off, she'll, she'll state the date and go, I'm still married to Vic. And we still can't <laughs> don't get fall that. for scammers. Don't it's fall, literally in the bio of my Instagram. It says, don't fall for scammers pretending to be me. And I still get it. And then they'll, so co- I was like, okay, copy at that. some point I'm like, I put up my hands and I'm like, I don't know what else to do. This yeah. isn't my full-time job. Like, wow. <laughs> it could be a, 
full time job. And we talked to uh, years ago, talked to a guy from the FBI and he said, Oh, he goes, if you think you, you've got 10,000, he goes, we have 10,000 a day. He goes, it's constant and it's all usually coming out of West Africa and they have boiler rooms of people there and up on a bulletin board somewhere. It says everybody today is Elsa Jean and they all go out there and they have like a bunch of different things. And it's all the same stories. My dad died. I'm stuck in Ghana. I'm going to nursing school. My husband beat me. It's all the same bullshit. My you would twin expect sister. That's my tw- a big one. Twin sister. That was my favorite. Twin sister. I don't no have a twin sister for the record. <laughs> Doesn't have any siblings. Important to say. <laughs> I don't feel like I should have to say that, but now I feel like I do. I mean, I'm. It, this isn't an admirable thing they're doing, but on on the one hand, I'm kind of like fucking hell. These guys are grinding. Oh my god! Oh my god! I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they're work. the best profile. They're better profilers than the FBI. They know exactly which guys. If I they follow, exactly like, if I make an, a friend and I follow them on my porn account on my porn Instagram, they will instantly get like thirty fake Danny Daniels accounts that follows them that tries to like I've hit them, them up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm not just saying this by the way. I've had. 20 to 50 yeah. of, of your versions of you. And I've had DMs. That I'm like, this is bullshit. Yeah. It's so weird. And and the thing is, is you're not even really the target. I, I said to them, I'm not actually true Jordan. I'm his twin brother. Um, <laughs> That's what you should do from now genuine. on. And if, if you, you send me $5,000, you, you can get the real one. You can meet the real one. And it's insane that you have to get to that point. You're not really the target. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll find... You know, a guy who's a little bit older, who obviously looks like he's lonely or something, and they'll look at their bio, and God forbid he commented, because oh, we've got yeah. them send it to us. They'll be like, I saw you commented on my page, and I thought you were really cute, and- Now my is, comments are going to yeah. go down on Instagram. Yeah, this Thanks, is my, Vic. Yeah. This, is my, you know, my, this is my super secret page, and we can chat here. Just mm-hmm. don't tell my husband. It's yeah. like, right, I think I'd go. be really good at picking those guys up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not a nice quality, but yeah. it's not a loser yeah. on my life. Yeah, you can, I'm and, sorry. And, and, and so can they. And yeah. So can they. And a lot of times these guys, I mean, I feel bad. A lot of times these guys are lonely and I've gotten messages and I'd probably say about 70 or 80% realize they got screwed and they're actually nice. About 20% can get really Imagine ugly. Your, Imagine your message. Oh God. Oh I should, God. You're messaging the husband of the woman you think is going to fly over to sea and you're like, so you're still with her then? Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. It's like, literally. This is hey, mad. by the way, I just want to know, um, are you and Danny still together? Yes. Um, well, I've been getting this. You're not talking to her, but she sent me these photos. I'm like, dude, they're everywhere. They're yeah. Everywhere. It's, like, it's like, you can get it. Bad. You can get them for a lot less than five grand. If you sign up to my only fans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the bizarre part too, is it's like, I almost want to type back and go, you knew, you mm-hmm. knew deep you knew down, really. you knew, cause you wouldn't have messaged me if you didn't realize yeah. that there was something going on. But, and it's sad because some of these guys, like, I feel bad for them. I really do. Mm-hmm. They actually come back later on. You find out, I don't know, they lost their wife or mm-hmm. something happened. And, and like, they were just lonely guys who got preyed upon by, you know, scammers. And I mean, it's just like, like they prey upon elderly with bank scams. Yeah. It's the same bullshit. Go- going back to the humiliation stuff you mentioned earlier, I've heard about people who like, this the financial domination. Those and, are my other favorite. Oh, man, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep Those it coming. Those are my other favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah we yeah, love yeah. the financial domination. Ooh, love it. At least that- <laughs> I love a man's wallet anytime. But at least those guys know what they're getting into, right? I think I was unaware that I was actually in one of those relationships for quite a while. <laughs> I just didn't know it. Yeah, I'm just um, <laughs> But what the fuck? Like, what kind of messages will those guys send you? Like, what, and what are they What are they wanting? Because I don't, obviously, I've got no idea why a man would want that, but. Oh, I love it. It's like, um, they want to buy me things. They want me to make a wish list and they want to buy me what's on the wish list and they want me to have control of their wallet mm. and decide, you know, how much play money they get. You know, if their paycheck is, I don't know, I'm off the top of my head, two $2,000. Okay, well, I'm going to spend, you know, 1800 of it and figure out how to use the next you know, two weeks on 200 bucks. That's so scary. (laughs) But but this, again, this is consent. This isn't me like taking a fan and trying to like screw him over. This is a fan coming to me and being like, I want you to control my wallet. I want you to dominate me financially. I'm like, whew, say, oh, I love a dirty man. (laughs) (laughs) Is there a worry? Because the the reason this worries me is to me, if someone said to me, if some, anyone came up, Mm -hmm. let's just say a woman on the shoes on the other foot trying, Mm -hmm. I want you financially. (laughs) God, that would be that would be the fucking day. I'll ne- <laughs> that will never be a thing. Women will never, never get off never, on yeah. that. No woman. Yeah. That's just stupid enough. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Are. Yeah. But, yeah. but let's just say it happened. I'd be like, this bitch is crazy. I, I, uh, some people will like take credit card info or like mm. debit card info. I won't because I just, I'm like, 
it's just too much of a, a line for me. So I have a wish list and I just go, go to my wish list and buy me those shoes. Uh, take me shopping. Like I'll have like a little like, oh, like, you know, spend this much money and I go shopping with it or buy me that. I want that for a scene or, you know, get me that new KitchenAid mixer. So I'll like make them, uh, they have to do it. And that's just like my own personal like comfort. Um, but I know, I know plenty of dominatrixes that'll be like, yeah, give me your credit card info. Good luck. It, that, that would scare me. That I that they, I don't know if these women are thinking along the lines that I am in terms of like consciously about mm. the circumstances that where you're then putting that man in. But how do you? But I'm not. Or the circumstances I'm not face, you're putting yourself in when they decide to report it as face, credit card fraud. <laughs> I'm not face to face with this person, and I don't know what his real circumstances. Mm. He might be playing a character just like I am. He might be like, I have five hundred dollars to spend, and I just want you know, I want to pretend it's my last five hundred dollars, and I want her to like you know, just you know, degrade me and use me and not give me any attention. So I don't know, and that's also why I like to use the wish list aspect because I feel like for them they are now in control it's their choice then mm-hmm. much like only fans you you know you're paying for that excitement or whatever whereas if you give a woman your credit card deals and she just fucks yeah like what if i just like was, swiped it for first of all i yeah. feel like that's some sort of illegal something somewhere yeah, down the line somewhere and then I, like if i just like go to and swipe his card for five grand it's like i don't know what his actual i don't want to actually hurt this guy mm-hmm. i just want him to like enjoy it and get off on it and pay me for it like you think there's just I, I'm wondering at what point do they get off on it? Like, do they like say the statement and be like, "Oh God, that's I, so much." I think everyone's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah that's so I much money. It, I, How am I going to eat this week? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like wanging off over that. Like, I, but some guys too will like <laughs> they like seeing me in what they bought. So I like that. they yeah. they enjoy like buying me the lingerie because I wear it in a scene and they and then they jerk off to it. That makes sense. Yeah. So it depends. Yeah. There's different. There's different. There's the I say that makes sense. Like, I would do that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it may. I, I kind of. It makes more sense than just looking at their screen and watching mm-hmm. their bank balance get annihilated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I have a lot of guys that are like, can I please give you my credit card info? And I have to tell them no, just from for personal comfort. But I yeah, think that's a, a smart thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just yeah. it's like I don't know. There's no safe word with like my shoe addiction so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you know if if, if uh, let's say uh, a, a woman who you happen to know came to you let's say she's just working a normal job mm-hmm. I'm sure there might be a woman watching this right now who might be considering this mm-hmm. what sort of um, reasons to do it and reasons to not do it would OnlyFans um, would you think about OnlyFans like you know do do it if you want to do it for this reason or mm-hmm. if it's for this do not do it like is there anything you're well think- first I would say like what do you want to do on OnlyFans mm. because you can you don't have to take your clothes off at all you can just do domination you mm. can just like what we were saying you could just do femdom mm. Um you could, you know, they ever, they, some of them don't take their clothes off. Yeah, depend. No, it depends on that. Like some performers, they do like foot fetish, mm. you know, latex. That maybe they just only do latex. Maybe they do um, just jerk off instruction, role play, dirty talk. So not everyone needs to get nude, but it's like if you go that route. Okay, well, why are you doing porn? If the, if you're going to go the porn route, are you doing it because you enjoy it? Are you doing it because you want to explore it? Okay, what is your current job? Is that going to affect it? Is are, how are you going to feel when your all of your family and your friends find out because they will mm-hmm. absolutely. Will. How are you going to feel if you know it comes up in conversation because it will? How are you going to feel like if you get judged blindly because you will? And and it's like I would love it if those things didn't exist, but they will because that's the reality of the situation of the world we live in. Riley Reid came mm-hmm. out and spoke about how she'd just been basically disowned by most of her family. Happens a lot. It was brutal. Yeah, I was watching it like. It happens a lot, unfortunately. It's like, it's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's, there's a bizarre thing too, where the family all of a sudden has a problem until they start making a lot of money and then they're fine with getting the money from. Yeah, she kind of said, I don't yeah. know if you heard that bit. Yeah, she I said her that. mother was on the take, like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm cool if you're giving me some. Yeah. And it's like, uh, wow. Yeah, that's really it's sad. But that happens a lot in friends and everyone finds out about it. You know, when I first started doing and now it's a little bit different because of OnlyFans, but they'll still find it. Everyone's like, oh, well, you know, you have to sign up. No, someone's going to find it. Someone's going to think it's hilarious and send it to all of your friends. That's yeah. such a good thing to point out. Though, <laughs> it is. Because it is like that is the norm, right? Like that you be, you become a pub story, mm-hmm. yep. you know, something to laugh about. Oh, oh when I started it. doing like mainstream porn and the people I went to high school with found out about it, my phone literally went like dink, 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 
ding, 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 ding. Because you could just tell. It's just like through the grapevine. Like yeah. if I found out someone I knew was doing porn, I would tell everybody about it because it was be, it would just be like, oh my God, did you hear about so-and-so? Like sucking yeah. dick, good for her. Like, you know, so. One of the main, main things that's happening in, in America, especially right now, is people in regular jobs mm-hmm. are getting exposed. So yeah. we're talking nurses, teachers, and even someone who was running for office yep. got exposed to being on yep. chat debate with her fella. With her yeah. fella yeah. And she's trying to be a politician. She was quite but, good looking politician. As politicians. But I mean, listen, you have, you know, it, politicians it, fuck you every day. So it, you might as well be on OnlyFans. <laughs> like, Jesus, it would yeah. be amazing if we lived in a world where you could do OnlyFans and, and these sites and still have, you know, your job of, you know, but it, we don't live in that world. Mm. And I feel like people have have this fantasy in their head that, oh, I hate my job. Let's just say, I don't know, you work at a coffee shop. I hate my job at a coffee shop. I'm going to do OnlyFans on the side. I'm going to make a bunch of money and I'm going to quit my job and be able to do OnlyFans. First of all, porn's not forever. So I hope you're saving the money and not just like blowing it on Louis bags. Second of all, if it doesn't work out, you're going to have to go back to that job if they'll even have you. Mm -hmm. Like when you find out about like teachers doing OnlyFans, I'm like, you're working with kids and you're surprised you got fired from your job? Like, this isn't the, you know, we don't live in this, like, f- like fantasy land that you think. And you're not going to make as much money that you think you're going to make unless you grind and hustle and work, you know, full. This isn't like a suck a dick for an hour and go home and have wine, you know. And do you think that there's a direct correlation between the amount of money you make and the things you're willing to do? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, uh, well, I think a lot of the time for people, definitely. Because the, the porn stars that I have become familiar with mm-hmm. are the ones who, you know, you, if, if you have a thing... Oh, are you saying it like the aspect of like, oh, I'll do butt stuff for like five mil? Yeah. Is I, it like that? Is it like putting I mean a price is, tag on it? The, the, the women who seem to be higher up in these porn categories seem to be getting gangbanged by 10 dudes. Like, they, there's no limit with them girls. I haven't done a gangbang, and I'm top 25. That, for, I mean, that is true, but, that, <laughs> but, that, but is that a rarity? It's though? very no, rare. Nah, yeah. yes, it is. Yes and no, though, because you have like uh, like Brandy's on there and she's never done butt stuff. And okay, so there's two. No, there's, if, you go through, <laughs> if, you go through that, if you go through that top 25, you'll see it's more likely that there's one of every category. There's a skinny girl. There's a blonde girl. There's a, you know, an African-American girl. There's an Asian girl. There's mm-hmm. you know, a girl next door. There's more likely to be that. And some of them have limits. They they haven't gone over the edge. And then there are many people who go over the edge and can't crack in. Mm-hmm. Some of it has to do with a little bit of an X factor. Like, or do you involve your fans in more than just your porn? Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to go up. And the moment that they're bored with your porn, you're going to go right back down. I think it's also, mm-hmm. I did mainstream porn for six years. Yeah. I was on browsers and pen. I was a penthouse pet and I did all of these different mainstream like sites. I didn't just like start an OnlyFans and an Instagram with no following and start making millions of dollars a year. So I think that's the other dynamic. Like I, the people always say like, oh my God, how'd you get so popular? I'm like, I've been in this industry for thir- 13 years. Yeah. grinding for 13 years you know just you don't just like you take your panties off and like get instant fame it doesn't work like that yeah, yeah i think it's sold as that and, and, and then when you talk about the x factor yeah. there's also like and i don't know if this is just me but i think other dudes are like this as well like sometimes the prettiest porn stars you're a bit like meh but then there's ones with clear personality who are putting everything into it and they make you feel like almost you're in the room sort of thing mm-hmm. you know and i think those girls definitely seem to to do really well. I want to ask you a little bit at the end now about the age gap between you, because mm-hmm. I think that is quite an interesting thing okay. to deal with. And um, what is the age gap? 23, 23 years. years. Okay. So you guys seem like clearly two peas in a pod. And I think anyone who's watched to this point will just get that. It's, you know, you're a double act. Um, <laughs> but but do you think about the long term and, and, you know, like one day you will be on your own mm-hmm. after this? And how, how have you made peace with that and how do you feel about that the pair of you uh we stick our head in the sand and pretend doesn't exist yeah (laughs) a little bit a little bit yeah a little bit in reality yeah we do we do have had some conversations about it and and the running joke is is she's going to be stuck with my kids when she gets older (laughs) but um yeah i mean we're the we're we're literally the same distance that lauren bacall and humphrey bogart were and, you know, obviously he died young, but that was like one of the greatest Hollywood love stories of all time. And it helps that I'm juvenile and she's not. Mm-hmm. So we, we get, we get much closer, in the middle. Yeah, much closer an age gap when she's an older soul and I'm mm. basically a child in an adult's body. So I guess it's one of those things where it's like, would you just tell some, not be with someone because you have the fear of being alone? 
What if I die first? Yeah, that's not happening. God, I hope I die first. I don't want to deal with that. That'd be, I'd be so sad. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, the reason I brought it up is when I, I was thinking about it. It's a, it's one of those awkward things to deal with in life, and a lot of couples do. I mean, mm -hmm. like older guys with younger women is mm -hmm. the most normal thing. But I just wondered where if you'd given it much thought, and if there was like, you know, if this happens, here's what we're gonna do, or have you talked like that, or yeah, we've a little bit. we've talked about like estate planning and mm. wills and that kind of thing. And I mean, yeah, I think you have to do that when you're with somebody for long enough, you have to kind of figure out like, hey, listen, mm. you know, you never know what's going to happen. You never, you know, yeah, like what if it's like down. something yeah. happens, yeah. you know, you never know. But I, I didn't even think about the age gap until people started bringing it up all the time. Mm. And then like, even now, I don't even think about it until these conversations come up. I'm like, oh yeah, like at some point, you know, but I would never trade it for anything. Oh, I'm not suggesting yeah. that at all. I, yeah, it's but clear it is, that you wouldn't. Yeah, but yeah. it's just, no, it's just like, it's just like surreal. You're like, yeah, you know, someday like... I just wanted. I just you, hope I go first. <laughs> let, let, let's say that you don't go first, which is obviously statistically more like. Do you think you would? You, you know, you'd, you've had your marriage in your mm -hmm. life, and you'd be like, "That was my great love of my life," right? Yeah. But would you? Do you think you'd go on and meet other people and just sort of? I don't think. Or do so. you think you'd just be like, "Nah, no. that's it for me." No. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I mean, I don't even. Said I'm going out when you die. I'm just going to go out and be like gang bangs every day. <laughs> just line them up. You know? yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do you know, do you know how some, no, some husbands are like, I, I, don't I either be... don't want you to go and be with other people and have company. Yeah. Or I, I do or whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't care. Like if I died, go out, go get some pussy. Like <laughs> live your best life. Yeah. Um, I, yeah I but I'm I don't want the wanna, same boat as yeah. you. I don't think I would. I mean, I don't know. It's like, you, you don't know what mm -hmm. life deals. Yeah, it's. Uh, I had a uh, relative years ago once told me death is certain life is not so go out and live go out and live and i took that to heart a long long time ago and mm -hmm. i started realizing man if you go through life trying to figure out when you're going to drop dead or when the next shoe is going to drop you're oh, going to yeah. drop dead and the next shoe is going to drop that's just what's going to happen but if you go through life trying to live it at least then you have something when it's all over and done with. You know, you can look back and go, that was a life worth living. Uh, not a life that I wish I had done 5,000 other things. Mm -hmm. and I learned really early on in life through a, through a decision that the, the things you regret most in life are the things you don't do. You know, the things you do do is like, at least I gave it a shot. And, and this is like, you know, I, I'm, I'm older and I'm hoping I last for a very long time, but at least I've had this period of my life and it's the happiest time of my life. So... Wow, I that's his, such a beautiful I, I thing to say. I sucked his dick for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that. That was so beautiful. <laughs> and you ruined it. <laughs> All right. Or, <laughs> that, that genuinely was such a nice thing to hear. And it was probably one of the nicest things we've had said on this podcast. So well done, brother. <laughs> Thank you. He's, he's, he's definitely a, getting he's, laid. Like, yeah, right got, <laughs> there's a poet in there. Um, what a beautiful performance from you two. Thank oh, you very thank much. You. Um, yeah. Smashed it. That was once again, Danny Daniels and her husband, Vic uh, Chipola. Chipola. There yeah. we go. On the True Geordie podcast. Appreciate everyone who watched. You can check these guys out. Follow them. They're everywhere. Millions of followers. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. 